Last year, the Maine Black Bears were ranked number one in the country as they headed to Lake Placid and the Final Four. There, they were beaten by Lake Superior in their semifinal matchup and would have to wait yet another year for a chance at the championship. 1989 finds the Black Bears again in contention for the national title, and despite a year of ups and downs and countless injuries to key players, they fought their way to a Hockey East championship, and now their sights are set on winning Maine's first ever national crown. Tonight, it's the first step as the Maine Black Bears face off against the Red Hot Providence College Friars next. University of Maine Playoff Hockey is brought to you by Coca-Cola. You can't beat the feeling. By the Lee Group. You can always get it for less at Lee. By your Maine and New Hampshire Weather Shield dealers. All weather protection, always. Levinsky's. Start looking good today. Country Farm Furniture, where you can make your house a home. Your Maine and New Hampshire Thermatru dealers, making doors that last, made us first. Try sports. Come ride with us. And by Yankee Ford. Let Yankee make a shrewd car buyer out of you. Alfondarina, just about an hour ago, check out the line of folks trying to get a ticket for tonight's all-important game between Maine and Providence. The place is full, it is loud. The Friars and the Black Bears in a game to decide who gets to the Final Four. We set the scene for you by going back just 24 hours ago when David Capuano got the Bears off to a great start last night on a pass from Mario Thayer just 38 seconds into the game. But Rob Goudreau made it one to one and then it was Bob Corkum with a pass from Scremen and Fire to make it 2-1. to one. Obey came back to make it a 2-2 two -two game on a pass from Mike Bobak. And then the game winner. It came from Martin Robitaille. It squirted through Mark Romaine, and the Bears had a 3-2 lead. And then, just as time was expiring, you see the scramble in front. Matt Del Judas said that puck was only three inches from the goal line, but the Bears held on for a 3-2 to two win and Sean Walsh was some happy although there were a few shoving matches going on after the game. Well, hello everyone. I'm Dale Duff along with former University of Maine defenseman Scott Smith. We'll set the action for you and bring you the starting lineups right after this message. What would you get a centipede for his birthday? Mine was last Tuesday, and everybody gave me the same thing. Shoes from Levinsky Spring Footwear Sales. The Reeboks from Mom are 25% off. So are all the Nikes and the Vias. Those tree torrents from Uncle Bob are just $26.99 at Levinsky. Elise gave me the Maine Woods fashion shoes, and my brother Sam got me the wildest vision. I love all my shoes from Levinsky, but I really wish someone would give me a t-shirt or shorts. They're all on sale, too, or jeans. same. Just ask Lenny. He's run a lot of different machines. With a D3, you can talk and ready. You can tackle any job you want to tackle. You can do a big fill job. You can keep up with 10 wheelers. In my opinion, it's the best. The torque converter into the D3 transmission really gives it an edge. That's one of the reasons why I switched all my machines to Caterpillar. Owners and operators agree about Caterpillar quality. We can put it to work for you, too. We're Jordan Milton, your Caterpillar dealer, Scarborough, Maine. Welcome back to Alphonse Arena, and Scott Smith, number 11, is the guy Maine has to watch out for. Rick Bennett, big uh, junior from Springfield, Massachusetts. He's been a great player for Providence so far this year, and especially in the playoffs. The main player tonight that's going to probably be playing mostly against them is number 19, Bobby Corkum from Salisbury, Mass. They uh, played against each other a lot last night, and it's going to be uh, the same way tonight, so it should be an interesting matchup. It's a best of C3 series that has come down to this. The winner tonight goes to the final four. We'll have the opening face-off right after this.
Every weather shield window and door is crafted with the utmost care and attention to detail. That's why they've become the builder's choice. With over a quarter century of experience, they're producing some top quality wood windows to meet some very special specifications. Distinctive wood windows and doors built from the finest quality materials. Weather shield windows built for you. Don't just admire them, ask for them at your Weather Shield dealer. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. Excuse me, who's the expert on aerodynamics around here? You're looking at him. Tell me, what's the most aerodynamic sedan made in North America? You're looking at it. Yes, Eagle Premier is the most aerodynamic sedan built in North America. And now it's also one of the most affordable. But you don't need an expert to tell you that. See your New England Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. For tonight's game, Steve Petrosky is the official, the referee, the linesman John Jones and Drew Taylor. Petrosky is from the CCHA, and Scott Smith, you know him. He's a good man. Uh, he, he lets the players play, and uh, he makes for an interesting game. Mark Romaine back in net again for the third straight night for the Friars, and Matt Del Judas back in the pipes for the Black Bears. An outstanding effort last night. Del Judas is a red hot goalie, and Sean Walsh is hoping for him to come up big one more time. Well, he likes to play those pressure games, and tonight's another pressure. He's had uh, two in a row now, so let's see if he can get a hat trick for the night. He got him to the Hockey East Championship game and got that trophy, and now he wants to get him to the Final Four. Luke Vitale against Mike Bobak on the opening draw, and it is won by the Bears. This is Bobak ahead to Goudreau, but he loses the puck temporarily, and Major just sends it to center ice. It's quickly dumped back in on Matt Del Judas. He easily gloves that puck fly. Now Bob Corkum on it. We'll watch this line on the big line for the Friars all night long. Tony Link behind the net for the Bears. Uh, Bob Bears checked that. Now Sean Kane tries to move it back in from center ice, and Bobak has it. Bennett is 11, Bobak is 15, Rob Goudreau is 7. That's the big line for the Friars. At center ice, Scremen and Kane fight for it. Kane dumps it in the main zone, and the Friars will make their first change of the night. The Bears have just changed up. In deep on it is Obey behind the net. He's fighting with Capuano. Finally, it's Pellerin with the puck. We've played one minute in this game now. They dump it in down the ice. Will it be icing? Yes. Providence coming out real strong, putting a lot of pressure on the main defense. You know, Sean Walsh said earlier that they want to do what they did last night, control the neutral zone and control their defensive zone and help Matt Del Judas out as much as they can. It's going to be a big game for the main defense tonight. And I would think more than anything else tonight, Scott, the first goal is so important to get that momentum with you, huh? Well, it's real important. It was real important for Maine last night getting that first one on the first shift. Uh, that kind of turned the tides a little bit and uh, automatically put the pressure on Providence. And uh, that's probably one of the factors that caused them to lose that game last night. You know, Maine got the quick momentum on them. All right, Perron against Obey on the draw. It is won by Maine to the corner. Goes Pat Madigan. He scrambles hard there. Now Obey with the puck to Madigan. Loses it in the state. Backhands it. It's tipped away there. His first test of the night. Fires back in on Del Judas. Jimmy Burke is on it for Maine, trying to clear ahead to uh, Martin Robotai. He's rushed to the boards, and the puck squirts into the crowd. Del Judas with his first test of rubber there tonight. Well, it was nice to see Matt. You know, he probably wanted a shot a little earlier than that to get him right into the game. And uh, like a lot of forwards in defense, when they like to go out and make a good hit or make a pass or get a shot on net just to get that initial uh, edge off him. You know, it takes down the nervousness a little bit. And I'm sure the nerves are a little high tonight. Number three is Jeff Robinson. Ahead to John Ferguson. He'll just dump it in, and the Friars will go after it. Del Judas with a nice clearing job, though, and it comes outside the zone. 
ahead is Cambio trying to break in on Sondercook. Sondercook in front. There's a shot that trickles on. Belfay couldn't quite get a good shot off there. And they tie it up in the corner. That was dangerous. The line of Belfay, Lalonde, and uh, Cambio, they didn't play too much last night, but when they were on the ice, they, had, they caused a lot of havoc and uh, they got this, this whole barn going here and the main fans and main players alike. So hopefully that line will do a good job tonight. We played a minute and 53 seconds of this game. No score. Again, reminding you that the winner tonight goes to the National Final Four. The winner tonight will take on Minnesota in the semifinals. The Golden Gophers uh, won last night against Wisconsin. They won that series 2-0. Godotti tees it up, but it's blocked in front. Back is Soroic along with Capuano. It's still behind the net, and finally it's ridden out there by John Ferguson. Can't clear the zone. Pellerin checking hard, but finally it's Pat Becker. Now Sean Kane dumps it in for the Friars. Back after it is Guadotti for Maine. Vince is rubbed against the boards. It's intercepted there by Whittemore, and he'll fire to the open wing. Now it's Becker against Scremmen. Back in front, it goes to Whittemore. In front, there's nobody home. Soroic tees it up. Is a shot on save by Del Judas. There's Kane teeing it up. It's blocked in front by uh, Capuano. There's another shot on, and it's saved and kicked away. As all kinds of pressure coming from the Friars. Another shot by Becker, and we've got a penalty coming up in front. It's going to be Todd Wintermore for Providence. He came right through the crease and hit Matt Del Judas. I like the way Del Judas was playing there. There was one shot on that was deflected. Maybe not. It's Vinny Gadotti going off for cross check. And we'll see it on the lower left hand side of the screen. Boy, that, that should have maybe been an interference on uh, Whittemore. He came right through the, the crease and hit Del Judas. All right, here's the shot from the point. Oh, Lord, look at that. Right off that post. That was, a, that was a scary one for uh, Matt Del Judas. The goaltender's best friends are the pipes. <laughs> Behind the net, there's a real muscle tussle for it. Finally, the Bears get it cleared to center ice. Down on Romain. It's a power play for Providence. Jimmy Hughes has trouble gaining control of the puck. Major is working hard on the forecheck, doing a wonderful job against Bobak and Hughes. And finally, Goudreau tries to ride it out of there, but can't. Finally, they have to give up the puck. Minute 27 left on the penalty to Gordon. At center ice, Vitaly tries to break up, but can't. Now it's Hughes to Bobak. Main for checking well, forcing them deep. Can't get anything started. Hughes trying to work the puck ahead. He does to obey. Intercepted by Perron. He will move in the right side and fire save Romain. Now Jim Hughes ahead to Mike to Rick Bennett. Intercepted by Main and fired into the crowd. This is what we said. This game was going to be intense. The main drop to him now this first four minutes 54 seconds left on the providence power play and sometimes when the home team kills an early power play that's as good as and as anything as far as momentum right scott well they're just trying to get some momentum going we'll see geep ron come down the right side and put a nice low shot right on romaine goaltenders don't like those right on the ice because a lot of things can happen to bounce bounce off the ice and uh, go between his pads. I've seen more screwy goals going like that. The Friars continuing to have all kinds of trouble on this power play. Give Maine's four checkers a lot of credit. All right, ahead it comes to John Ferguson. Up the left side he comes. Scrimmon ties him up. There's a Whittemore blast there. Uh, Wild Goose rather. And they dump it back in. Jenkins and Wild Goose were going at it there for a moment. Now Soroic tries to tie it up. It goes underneath Robitaille and we'll have a face-off. It's real important to note here that Maine's killing this penalty off and they're putting some great board checking on the Providence defensemen. When they do that, they're always making sure they have someone back, though. They're doing a swing pattern, so there's always one man back with the defense so they don't get two, two men caught down low. Here we'll see Todd Jenkins and Whittemore meeting uh, at the blue line a little bit. Those two guys are probably into the game after that hit. Uh, kind of woke them up a little bit, I'm sure. Wow, <laughs> look at that. 
little extracurricular activity there. <laughs> no score in the game. 17 seconds left on the penalty to Godotti of Maine. We played just over four minutes. This is Rick Bennett moving in the right side, but he loses the puck. Goes to the corner with Bob Beers. Now it's Obey. Says, uh, tries to center it to Godotti, but uh, to a good row rather, but can't. And now Godotti comes out. Godotti comes out of the box, and uh, when you come out of the, the penalty box, you got to go back into your zone and, yep. and kind of touch up more or less, yep. and then before you touch a puck, or else you're going to have a whistle. And Vinny touched it as soon as he got out of the box, and they have the faceoff down at the at the main end. And so the Bears do a great job killing that penalty. 15-14 left here in period number one. Guadotti on the puck, fires it around to Capuano. It loses it. Wild Goose has it. Now Becker and Madigan can't get a shot off. Out breaks Capuano. The defense for Providence just flips it back to the neutral zone, and Guadotti has it. Tries to send away the forwards, and now it's Capuano. Ahead to fire. Fire is rubbed to the boards, and it's taken over by PC. Mario Obey tries to flip it ahead. It lands on the Providence bench, and we'll have a face-off. We'll take a break. There is no score. Mean and Providence will come right back. This is it. What you feel in love. coach a win tonight would give him 150 wins on his career Sean Walsh hit the 100 win mark earlier in the year both coaches just want to get a win not for the personal record they want to get to the final four penalty coming up on Providence Stephen Higgins is going to be gone for a little interference Chris Cambio trying to put some pressure on uh, the Providence defense when he kind of stepped in front of him a little bit and gave him a stick and uh, Chris went down so he'll be sitting in the old sin bin for a couple uh -huh. minutes. So Gudati got the first penalty of the night. And Higgins will now take a seat for two minutes as we take a look at how it happened. Down he goes, and up comes the arm. Of course, Higgins throws the hands in the air and says, what did I do? I didn't do anything there. The call is interference, and so the Bears get the power play cranked up. Beers, Capuano, Major, Fire, and Corkum out there for Sean Walsh. Face off one by the Friars. Soroic just tries to send it out, but can't. Good job by Capuano to keep it in. Now it comes to Beers. Into Fire. Tries to center a pass to Major, but he can't get it. Bennett with the puck now for PC. At center ice he goes through the blue line now. He just dumps it in over the blue line, rather, and Capuano takes over. Bennett is out there along with uh, Pat Becker, Jeff Soroic, and John Ferguson to kill the penalty for PC. This is Bruce Major. He's knocked down on the play. The puck scores free. Soroic has it for the Friars. He sends it to the open wing where Bennett will get it. Bennett tries to send it out the zone, and he does. Beers couldn't quite keep it in. Minute 15 left on the penalty to Higgins of PC. Now Fire didn't see the puck coming. Now it's a breakout for John Ferguson. Up the rough side, he comes, tries to move in on Capuano. It's played nicely by Del Judas. Now wing to wing, it goes to Bob Corkum. He drops it for Perron. In front, there's a shot that goes just wide. Beers is on the play now. Around the net it goes. Robitaille and Corkum trying to keep that puck free, and they get it back to Beers. Beers tees it up. It's shot on that goes just a little bit wide after it's sticked aside. And back comes John Ferguson. He'll just dump it in from center ice, and both teams want to change up. 35 seconds left on the penalty to Higgins. 13.05 left in this first period. There is no score. Maine and Providence. 
Ahead it comes. Robitaille too far for him. Sondercook will get it, but Romaine plays it first to Jim Hughes. They just clear the zone. Now 18 seconds left on the penalty and it's scooped out again by Sondercook. Bears having a little trouble getting it inside the zone. Scremen just dumps it in and they'll go after it. Now just seven seconds left on the penalty. To the corner they go. Pellerin and is finally sent away by Providence College. The penalty is over and we're back skating five aside. Now it's Robitaille trying to break in on Kane. Kane knocks him down and takes over the puck. The crowd wanted to call, but they will get none. Now wing to wing. It goes to Obey. Up through the middle he comes. Mary Obey shoots. Saved by Del Judas. Mario Obey just flying up that neutral zone. Kind of caught Vinny Gadotti and Claudio Stremmen a little flat-footed. Just turned on the Jets and went wide right in on Matt. And Matt came up with a great save. We'll see here, he's coming down with a good head of steam. Vinny can't catch him, and Claudio's kind of out of reach. And boy, he puts a nice backhand on net, and uh, Matt comes up big. That's nice to see. Beautiful save by Matt Del Judas. The young man who has played so well in pressure games for the Black Bears. Behind the net, there's a shot in front. Well, he got that pass from behind the net, and he came right out, and uh, Matt didn't have much of a chance there. Just as quickly as Del Judas comes up with the save, the Friars get a break, and they move a nice pass in front, and here it is. Good, Providence shows good face-off intensity here, going hard to the puck. Just tapped it by Jimmy Burke a little bit. Great two-on-one out of the corner. Here, a little bit of better angle on it. Nothing Del Judas could do on that play. It's one to nothing, Providence College, as the Flyers draw first blood. They continue to put the pressure on now. Madigan, back to the point, Sorrow, and keeps it in. Now Madigan drops it off. There's a shot. Wild Goose, it's a save by Del Judas. He doesn't know where it is. Finally, he hangs on. That was close again. Means got to be a little tighter in that defensive zone. They're uh, kind of giving that puck away a little bit. And I'll tell you that Wild Goose, Obey, and Madigan line has been the best one so far tonight for PC. You see the shot coming in from the point. Matt makes a great initial stop, and then he kind of loses the puck a little bit. He's looking around. He can't see it. It's right down between his pads there. Jim Burke doing a good job keeping the Providence Flyers out from the, the low slot area there. Well, that's not a very good omen for Maine Black Bear fans, but there's a lot of hockey left to play. Yeah, and the way, the way this series is going, you cannot, you cannot, I think, throw all the stats out, out of the book and uh, and uh, go for it, because this has been a tremendous weekend series. Uh, has been We've seen two great games, and uh, it started off great already, except for the, the <laughs> Providence goal so far. We saw an 8-6 to six shootout on uh, Friday night. We saw, uh, saw a 3-2 to two defensive battle last night. Who knows what's going to happen tonight? All we know now is that the Friars have a temporary one to nothing lead on the goal by Wild Goose. Now Tony Link on defense for the Bears tries to clear it, but can't. There's a shot on, deflected wide of Del Judas. Finally, the Bears break out. But Pat Becker tries to ride it out, intercepted by Capuano. In comes Dave, two on one. He can't connect with fire. Behind the net it goes. Sonder Cook and Capuano fight away for it. It's taken over by PC. Todd Whittemore ahead to Pat Becker. He's hauled down on the play. The puck goes to the corner. It's Whittemore in there along with Ferguson. They try to center it, but taken over by Maine's Scott Pellerin. A young man from Shediac, New Brunswick, moves in. Here is fire. The can't get a shot off. It's poked away. Guadani tees it up. Saved by Romaine, and he holds on. Great concentration by Romaine. He thought that puck was probably going out of the zone. Vinny Guadani just coming off the bench. Catches that puck in full stride and lets a rocket go from the point. You can see him there taking the slap shot. Romaine with great concentration watching it come all the way in. There was uh, Scott Pellerin in front trying to get a stick on it to tip it a little bit, but could not. Both Pellerin and Fire are right there waiting. We've played nine minutes in this first period now. One to nothing, Providence College over Maine. Jim Hughes, their captain and defenseman, an outstanding player, tries to send away Goodrow, but can't. That's an offside play. I don't think Goodrow uh, thought. He didn't see the ref, uh, the linesman's hand go up. But that was an offside play. 
Well, this line for Providence really likes to get the motors running, and uh, they fly around, fly around out there. They're, they've been the hottest team, uh, maybe one of the hottest teams in college hockey oh, so far this playoffs. Boy, they've just been playing great hockey. And they've played a lot of close games. Remember, they had to beat BU by one goal just to get to the Hockey East semifinals where they lost to BC in overtime. So they played a lot of close games. They played a lot of hockey, period, in postseason. All right, Mike Bow back ahead at center ice. J Jim Burke is on it. He knocks it back, but Steve Higgins tries to move it in. Now Rick Bennett. He'll dump it in, and Providence will go after it. Now Corkum tries to move it up, but can't. Kept in there by uh, Higgins. Guadotti behind the net takes a hit from Bobak, but gets the puck to Corkum. Corkum tries to send away Vitali, but can't. That's an offside play on Providence. Bennett couldn't get outside the zone in time. Bruce Major. He's had a good playoff so far yes, for me. Has. Two big goals on uh, Friday night. He's also the hanging judge for the kangaroo court, and we'll talk about that in between periods a little bit later on in the uh, telecast. Bruce Major is an outstanding player in Vernon, British Columbia. Beautiful area. Been a great player for the Bears. All right. At the blue line is taken over by Providence College. Gooden tried to dump it in. He got hauled down on the play. Finally, he just squirts it in, but not very far. Guidotti. Now it's fanned on by Sean Kane, so Soroic has to go back after it and does. He clears it up, but not out. Beers at the blue line, flips it in. This is Jenkins, back to Scremen. He tees it up, saved by Romaine. With the glove. Mark Romaine comes up big again. Todd Jenkins just slides it back to Claudio Scrim, and he lets a blast go from the point. They're giving him a lot of long shots tonight. He's done really well with them so far. He's known as a streaky goaltender, and he's in a good streak during these playoffs. All right, breaking out is PC's Pat Madigan. He can't go past uh, center ice, though. Obey with it. Tries to send Wild Goose in on the open wing. Wild Goose turns, holds, puts a backhander across to Obey, but can't get to it. Now Wild Goose tangles with another fellow. Finally, they fired in wide of Del Judas, and D Matt Vince Guidotti has the puck kept in by PC. It's Pat Madigan. He throws it around the dasher to the open wing. Link and Obey crash into each other. There's a centering pass. Madigan's shot is stopped by Del Judas, and the Bears break out. I think Madigan was really ready for that puck. He was just coming through the slot, and uh, the puck was right on his stick. Give the territorial edge to Providence College here in period number one, so far anyway. The Friars dump it in and want to change up. They try a centering pass, intercepted there by Ferguson. There's a shot on, Del Judas will keep it. We'll take a break. Our score, Providence College one, main zero. We're coming back to Alphon. In a world of warped, cracked, leaky wooden doors, one door beautiful fiber classic by Thermatru. Rugged fiberglass and solid insulating foam that looks just like wood, but stands up the blistering heat and fighting cold for years. The great-looking, trouble-free fiber classic by Thermatru. An open and shut case for greater home beauty. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. Here we see Tony Link going in the corner. Plays a great check on number 27, Mario Obre. And Sean Walsh looking on as he sees his team down by one. Soroic shot is deflected in front, held on to by Del Judas. That thing was tipped in front, and it went from about knee level to eye level in a hurry. Matt showing great concentration. He's going to have to be in it every second tonight. 8.39 left in period one. McShane with that familiar crouch that we've seen all weekend, at least in the first two periods anyway. <laughs> it's one to nothing PC. They throw fire out of the uh, face-off circle. And uh, Captain Wano will come in and take it. It's a couple times Maine's been thrown out of the circle so far tonight. Beers and Burke on defense. Burke can't handle it. It comes back to Higgins. He'll tee it up in front, and Del Judas holds on. Well, that puck went through about three or four players. 
I don't know how Matt came up with it because uh, we're right on angle here and I could hardly see it here. We'll take a look at her. Shot from the point. Everybody's jumping up out of the way. Bobby Beers. Oh. Wow, look at that. Look, Beers is skating. The 22-year-old Matt Del Judas. The Boston Bruins, I hope they like what they see here this weekend because he's a heck of a player and he's uh, just a sophomore. He's going to have a great future here at Maine and hopefully a future after. He's a transfer from St. Anselm's College. He was an All-American Division II last year, so we know the guy can play. And he's been the money goalie in postseason. Higgins dumps it into the corner, goes around the dasher to the open wing. On it is Bobak. He tries to send it back to the point, but Major intercepts, and the Bears clear it down the ice. Higgins in a race with Vitale. Higgins is there first. Now Bennett tries to clear the zone. Can't. Now it's Goudreau. That was dangerous. Now Bennett moves around. One man moves in. Rick Bennett shoots it. Guess why? He broke in alone. There's a tip in front, and the Bears clear the zone. Now wing to wing, it's Bob Corker. He moves in. Shoots. Saved by Romaine. The puck is loose, but the net comes off its mooring. End-to-end -end action, and they're going to say the face-off will stay in the zone because it was a Providence player that knocked that net off its mooring. Bobby Corkum going hard to the net, just followed right through and ended up in the net. Fans were a little upset coming up the ice there. Bruce Major was tripped up, and uh, they, the main fans wanted a penalty. You see Bobby coming right in hard. Showing great strength there. Just could have gotten that puck up a little bit, huh? Here we'll see a little action on our right there. Bruce Major just gets yanked down a little bit. Steve Higgins, and the ref didn't see that. Face off one by Providence College, and this is Jeff Sorowick. I head to Butterworth, but he can't connect. They wave off icing, though. So Del Judas plays it. Now Tony Link, the freshman from Alaska, starts up ice through center ice. He's got Pellerin. He'll knock it into the corner, and Pellerin and company go after it. Scremmon along the boards with Butterworth. It's underneath David Gooden. They try to tie it up for a faceoff, and finally they do. The elbows are coming up as well. well David Gooden was trying to freeze the puck there, and he was kind of pulling it in. Looks like there's going to be a few penalties assessed here. Probably just Scott Pellerin and Sean Kane, a little extra activity. We'll see it right here, right close. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It's a game of emotions, Dale. Emotions run high, especially tonight. Good thing we got glass there between our cameraman and the, those two guys. Are, he was going to take one of those punches. I think that's a great shot. So Scott Pellerin, who will back down from no one, is in the box, along with uh, defenseman Sean Keane. So we'll skate four aside. And I generally think that this helps Maine with a little more open ice. Maine's got the better of the speed. The penalties come at the 7.27 mark of period one. Fire is out there with Capuano. Guadotti and Scrimmon play the defense for Maine. John Walsh checking his list and checking it twice, trying to come up with that strategy that will get him a goal. Jeff Sorowick, wing to wing, it goes to Wild Goose. Wild Goose has been flying so far tonight. He just fires it easily on Del Judas. Now Paul Sondercook and Capuano. Sondercook gets to it first to Sorowick. Sorowick dumps it in. Ope is onside, tries to go around Scremmon, but can't. He fires it on Del Judas, and he holds on. From an impossible angle, he got it on the goal. Well, he's a bad angle there, but he let a nice shot go, Matt. Just watched it right, right into his chest. C took the smart move and covered it up and got a stoppage of play. I think that's one thing that Del Judas has been working on this year is, is not leaving the rebounds. He's done a wonderful job of that in postseason. Well, that's real important at this level. I mean, they got to be able to move the rebounds around a little bit. And uh, right there, he takes a face off, which is real smart. You know, if, if they're having a little bit of problem in the defensive zone, might as well take a whistle, get some new personnel out there, and uh, regroup. On the draw, it's kept in by Jim Hughes. He fires it behind the net. A minute and a half left on the matching minor penalties to Pellerin and to Kane. 
Maine trying to break ahead, but can't quite do it. Yeah, I think that's going to be offside. It is. Maine's got to clear the zone. Ahead, it'll come to Ferguson. He can't connect with the pass, and Robitaille has it for the Bears. He sends in Christian Lalonde. Lalonde around the net. He's squeezed out of the play, and Hughes takes over for PC. Wing to wing, it goes to Ferguson. At center ice, he'll just dump it in, and the Friars will go after it. Actually, they're going to change up on the play. Now under a minute and left on the matching penalties. Martin Robitaille at center ice is taken by Jenkins. He tries to bust in through, goes around the net, loses the puck for the moment, regains it, flips it across to Perron, but nowhere near the puck. Back at it is Jenkins. He's flying around there. Now it's taken over by Mike Bobak. Bobak, whoa, almost intercepted again by Jenkins. That was close. Jenkins is flying around everywhere, just trying to be a busybody out there, create things. Now it's Perron trying to go around, does, shoots it, saved by Romain to the corner, it goes. Mark Romain had to be quick on that one. Capuano with the puck still, holds and holds. Two men come on him. Here comes Major. He tries to center it, but can't. It's blocked in front. Ridden out of there by Jeff Sorrell to the corner. Major bumps into him. In comes Capuano. They tie it up for a face-off. And every time there's a whistle, you see one Providence player just giving a little nudge. That's the PC style. Irritating, I guess, might be the word. Maybe not a penalty, although I think we're going to have penalties this time. Well, he's going to have to do that to control the game because last night there was a little Donnybrook after the game, a little squirmish, and uh, he doesn't want it getting out of control. You know, this is a real important game, and, and there's no need for that kind of garbage. So uh, hopefully he can keep things under control. And uh, you got to remember, Dale, one of these teams' season is going to be done tonight. Not only is it going to be done for the under underclassmen, but the, the seniors, they're all done. So this game is real intense. And so the referee sends off Major, and he sends off Saundercook. Meanwhile, Pellerin and Kane are still in the box for another four seconds. So we skate for the next four seconds, three on three. Here it is in the corner. Saundercook starts it right there. The whistle is already blown. And then they get into a scrap as uh, Major comes back with an elbow right there. All right, play on. In the main end, it's Beers and Scremen on defense, kept in by Obey. In deep, Del Judas plays it. He can't connect with Beers, but finally it's Corkin. Tries to go wing to wing with uh, Pellerin, but can't. And on it is Rick Bennett. The big, rugged winger for the Providence College Friars. He's been a force here this weekend. Hughes is broken up at center ice by Scremen, and Corkin just dumps it in. Bennett and Wild Goose are back there, along with Obey and Hughes for PC. This is Mario Obey. We're skating for a side. Minute 13 left on the matching penalty. Obey dumps it in as Providence wants to change. Now Guy Perron sends away Robitaille up the left side. He comes against Soroic, loses the puck. Lalonde just dumps it in deep. But back to get it is two PC players. This is Wild Goose has the only goal of the game. Dangerous pass in front of the net. Soroic is on it, though. Now Sean Kane can't connect, and Maine takes over. 4.15 left in period one. It's Providence one, Maine nothing. The winner of this game goes to the national final four. John Ferguson leaves it for Hughes, tries to go back. Capuano does a good job for checking. And now it's Pat Becker trying to clear the zone and does. Ahead to John Ferguson. Up the left side, he flies. Moving in deep. Trying to center it, but he can't. Tied up in front is Becker and the Bears skate out. David Capuano. Up the left side, he comes. He'll wind up. It's a save by Romaine. That was a wicked slap shot. Now it's fire on it. Back it comes to Guidotti. He tees it up. It's a score! We'll see on the replay, Jimmy Hughes, the Providence defenseman, was coming off from the corner. He skated right in front of Romaine, just as Vinny Gadotti was shooting. And Romaine never saw the puck. Big goal for Vincent. And just get the puck on net, and good things happen. Right off of Jimmy Hughes. Not only did he screen him a little bit, he deflected that puck in.
went off his right skate there, and Romain didn't even have a chance. And so we're tied at one. 3.36 is the time of the Visquadati penalty. And now time expires in the matching minor penalties, and so we're back skating five aside. That brings the Alphon Arena crowd alive. Belfe tries to move in, but can't. Intercepted by Belfe, but clears the zone. He just dumps it in. Sean Kane is on it for the Friars. Now Kramer, Bob Kramer, dumps it in, and the Friars want another quick change. In after it, they can't keep it in the zone. Finally, it's dumped in by Robeson, and they'll have to clear the zone. It all comes all the way down the ice. Will that be icing? Yes. Big goal for Maine here with about three minutes left. That's going to give him a lot of uh, confidence. We'll take a break. It's Maine 1, Providence 1. We'll come right back to Alphond after this message. along with Scott Smith bringing you the action from Alphonse in the third game of a best of three series, Maine and Providence. We are tied at one. This has been an even Stephen series all weekend long. Now Bobak tries to send in Goudreau but can't connect on the pass. Corkum tries to send away a man intercepted by Bobak. He winds up, fires it wide. It goes to the point, back to Sondercook. He tees it up and deflects it in front. It goes wide. Vitaly sends it back to the Bears. At center right, tries to connect with Corkum, but couldn't send him away, and that's icing. Bobby Corkum reaching for that puck, trying to get control of it. Just couldn't get it. 2.25 left in this first period of play, and Bob Corkum is now the all-time main leader in most games played. And he takes over from a guy that you know and that you played with, Dave Winston. Let see that last shot. Providence player standing right in the mid-crease there and has a great tip right on Matt Del Judas and he steers it wide. Face off, one by PC. Soroic tees it up and popped in front. Kane on it in front is blocked down in front there. That was dangerous. Soroic is on it for the PC. Friars. Center ice, Robitaille is knocked down. Perron tries to start in, but can't. Now Jenkins It's to the corner, and we'll have a penalty. One of the Friars is going off for hooking. I didn't know. I don't know which one it was. So Swarick or uh, Jimmy Higgins? I'm not sure. There was a lot of commotion there. It's going to be uh, Mario Obey, the sophomore from Sherbrooke, Quebec. Very important time of the game. 7 left in the first period and the penalty see a little bit of a hook there there's not much you can do when they pull your skates out Dale and so the Bears will be on the power play for the remainder of this first period or for most of it all but seven seconds and what a crucial time in the game to get a goal huh this would be big to, to go into the intermission with a lead Robitaille it comes back to Stremen. He'll go to Guadotti. Teed up in front and blocked down there. I don't think Romain saw it coming. This is Perron. Now Capuano is on it. Back it comes to Vince. He tees it up and it goes wide. Stremen is on it. They try to knock it out of there but can't. Stremen just fires it in deep. Sonder Cook tries to get it. He tries to tie it up and he does. Smart play by Sonder Cook to get a whistle. It's interesting to see number 11, Matt Bet Rick Bennett, we talked about earlier. Big, big left winger on the power on the power play and penalty killing. Uh, McShane chooses to put him back on the point because he's a big, strong forward. He's 6'4", 215, and he can really move the guys out in the front. He's been there all weekend. Just plants himself in front and takes care of either Bobby Corkum or Scott Pellerney, or tries to take care of him. So. He stays out there. A couple of other province players will go off. 
stays on. Bobak is out there with Sorowic and Wildness, and now the referee is not going to let him change. Uh, Goodrow has to stay out. Wildness is going to have to go off. The ref says no more changes. Maine has Corkum, Major, Fire, Capuano, and Beer. It comes back to Capuano. He'll tee it up and shoot it just wide. It's against the net. Bennett fires it around the dasher. Beers tries to keep it in and does. This is Capuano. Loses the handle for the moment. And Bobak clears it out with Goodrow. Two on two. They decide to kill off some time. Soroic just fires it down in on Del Judas. A minute 13 left on the penalty. A minute 17 left in the period. The Bears are on the power play. Now Capuano lets it out of the zone. Through center ice he comes. He'll just fire it around the dasher who can get to it first. Bennett oh, shots at it, but it's fired on by Beers, and Romaine holds on. Maine doing a good job keeping the puck in the zone and putting some rubber on Romaine. You gotta keep doing that all night, get as many shots as they can on uh, Mark Romaine. Scott Pellerin. The great two-way freshman for the Black Bears who can score goals and he can hit. Fifty-one seconds left on the penalty. Fifty-eight seconds left in the period. The puck is loose. Scrimmon is on it. Tukadotti, he fans on the shot and the PC Friars clear out it out of the zone. Now Robitaille sends in Guy Perron up the left side. He puts on the brakes and dumps it back to Guadotti. He'll tee it up in front, and the puck is loose, and somehow Romain keeps it from going in. He was looking behind him for a moment. He's not going to stop. He didn't have to do all night. They have to get right in there and cause a lot of havoc on Romain. He has great concentration on those long shots, but sometimes he has a little bit of a problem with the rebound. There he really doesn't know where it is. It's right on his back. And uh, Scott Peller and going for it. Here it is again. Perron sends it back to Guadotti. And off it goes. Tipped in front. Uh, uh, Grobatov tipped it. I don't know how a goal can stop stuff from quit up like that. I just don't know how they do it. And we've got penalties for that scramble in front. Matching penalties. Perron will go off, and Wild Goose goes off. And so the referee is bound and determined to keep control of this game, and uh, he's going to keep sending these guys off on matching minor penalties for this activity after the whistle. Thirty-three seconds left in period one. Twenty-six seconds left on the power play. We're skating five on four. It's Soroic trying to clear it outside the zone, but can't. Capuano now on it. He'll come to Beers. He tees it up and fires it. Romain kicks it away smartly. Now Bobak just fires it down the ice. And the Bears will get probably one more dash up the ice left in this period. It's Bob Beard from Chicktawaga, New York, ahead to Dave Capuano. He'll move in the right side and drop it for Pellerin, but it squirts outside the blue line. Obey is on it. And he was offside because he didn't touch up coming out of the box. So we have four seconds left in period one. We are tied at one. Faceoff will come inside the Providence zone. You might have to give the edge of Providence this first period. They've been really playing hard and uh, real intense and killed off some big penalties. And uh, Maine just has to keep, keep, keep chugging away at them. What a series this has been. You know, no team has had more than a two-goal lead in this entire series. It has been back and forth, back and forth. One team gets the momentum, the other team does something to get it back. And that's the way it has been ever since the Friars showed up in town. Four seconds. The Bears would just like to get one shot on Romaine if they can when they drop the puck. But I don't think they're going to.
so we have nothing decided as Sean Walsh and company walk off the ice tied 1-1 with the Providence College Friars and we'll come back with in between period guests and more when we take a break come right back in January we gave away snowblowers and as you know it never snowed well this month we're giving away lawnmowers and I can guarantee you the grass will grow so come on down to Yankee Ford between now and the end of the month. Make your best deal, get the highest trading allowance, and take one of these brand new lawnmowers home with you for no extra charge. And we can back up what we sell with our factory trained technicians, our large parts department, and our state-of-the-art body shop. Yankee Ford, just over the Million Dollar Bridge in South Florida. This is your last chance, your last chance to buy Sealy Posturepedics at 1988 sale prices. Country Farm Furniture Sealy Gallery is overflowing with a special purchase of premium bedding. Twin pieces start at $59.95, and you'll save even more on the top-of-the-line Posturepedics. As usual, Country Farm Furniture will deliver your purchase free. But hurry for last year's prices at the Sealy showrooms at Country Farm Furniture in Kennebunk and Gray. Back to Alfond Arena, everyone. We're at the end of the first period of play, and it is one to one. Lyle Wild Goose got the Friars off first with a goal at the 7.52 mark. Vince Guidotti teed it up, and it was tipped in front by uh, from the skate of a Providence player at the 16.24 mark, and that's where we stand after one period of play. And I'm Dale Duff, along with Scott Smith, in between periods, and uh, that was an interesting period. Nothing gives so far. Providence came out playing real hard, and uh, main match right with them. Both teams got a goal, and uh, two-period game now. Well, what we're going to do now is give you a look in, at the injury problem that has been with Maine for all year. Injuries certainly play a part in any sport, and for the Maine hockey team, this season has been filled with ups and downs created by injuries. Jenkins out in front, and Capuano, goal! From behind the net, Major bags it in off Littman, and May While the victories have been sweet, this has been a long season for the Hockey Bears. Several of Maine's best players have been sidelined with injuries. Goalie Scott King was out for nine games when he suffered a deep cut in a game against Denver. Other injuries to top goal scorers like Todd Jenkins, Guy Perron, and senior defenseman Vince Guadotti have slowed the Bears down. Now, with the hockey season in its final two weeks, the Bears are nearly at full strength. Christian Lalonde, who broke his wrist against Boston College back in February, and Mario Fire, who suffered a broken leg against Ohio State in just the third game of the season, are both back on the ice this weekend. No, there's no pain. That's the big, fact, the big thing, which is pretty good, because right now there's no pain at all. It's only, I saw why my ankle gets sore, but uh, there's no big problem there. If I knew that I would have the chance to be in a playoff, I wanted to play, you know, so there was no doubt in my mind. I mean, if I would have the chance to play like right now, I mean, I wanted to play. I didn't want to wait till next year. While there have been many injuries, Lalonde says the team has grown from the experience. You grow so much from it, I think. Some guys, some, you know, some of the freshmen got more experience. Some other guys got more ice time. And they, from games, you learn so much in games and stuff, and they, it gives them the chance to... Uh, get experience and I think in a sense we turn something that was negative into something positive. Okay and as we mentioned in that piece the Bears are almost healthy but uh, Maine lost one of its good defensemen on Friday. Keith Carney's in the hospital with pneumonia and uh, I'm sure he wishes he was out here tonight uh, trying to help out and, and uh, hopefully uh, he'll get better soon. Hopefully, if the Bears can get past this series, they'd uh, maybe get ready for the Final Four. We'll have to see on that. Right now, our score is Main 1, Providence 1. We're in between the first and second period, and we're coming right back to Alfond after this. Every Weather Shield window and door is crafted with the utmost care and attention to detail. That's why they've become the builder's choice. With over a quarter century of experience, they're producing some top quality wood windows to meet some very special specifications. Distinctive wood windows and doors built from the finest quality materials. Weather Shield windows built for you. Don't just admire them, ask for them at your Weather Shield dealer. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine.
$79.97? Yes, it certainly is. You can always get a fluorescent lead. All right, back at Alphonse Arena, our score is Maine 1 and Providence 1. A very interesting first period of play. Joining Scott Smith and myself right now is Joachim Wallstrom, the first player ever to play for the Black Bears from Europe. He is from Sweden, and I want to ask you, first of all, Joachim, your thoughts of that first period of play. Well, I think it's, uh, as you can see already, it's going to be a very close game, and uh, both teams are working so hard, and it's going back and forth, so it's really hard to tell right now what's, what it's going to be like at the next period. But... I think it's going to be one of those games when, you know, the conditioning is going to show at the end of the game, and hopefully we get better conditioning. Well, Kim, the players that aren't playing tonight, uh, like yourself, what what, do, what are they doing? Like, what did they do this morning to stay in shape, or does Sean skate them or have them on a program? Oh, well, yeah, we got to go to, you know, all the meetings, and we're part of the team as anyone else, and he wants us to skate, you know, when we don't play, and... Uh, you know, the better the players that are out of the lineup are, the better the team will be. So it's really, we got to work really hard. And we work hard to try to get in the lineup for the next game. What has the trans transition been like for you from uh, Europe to play here in Maine? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, the rinks. I mean, the rinks are so small over here. And both on the sides and behind the net. And uh, back home, you know, we can skate around and no one touch you. And... Uh, over here, the, the game is much more physical, and uh, that's what I'm going to work really hard on right now to, to get used to all the hitting. And uh, so far, I mean, I played 25 games, and every game I learned so much, but still, I had a lot to learn. And you've got a lot of time left here at Maine to, to skate? Yeah. All right. Well, best of luck to you, and best of luck to the Bears. We'll see what happens in the second and third period. Right now, we'll take a break. Our score is Maine 1 and Providence 1. You bet I've got questions about saving, saving money. money. Can I get a good return without too much risk? I don't need surprises. surprises. I, need I need advice. advice. But I don't know where to turn for, for help. help. I'm just plain tired of taking chances. When you have tough questions about saving money, we got the all types of plans, we got the plus insured safety, we got the only at your credit union. Maine Credit Union's part of a family 60 million strong. Everybody knows that milk's for babies, charming, disarming, whatever they do. Everybody knows that milk's for babies, wouldn't you know it, baby, milk's for you. Strong baby skin, strong baby bones, a bright baby smile and ooh, great muscle tone, wouldn't you know it, baby, milk's for you. It's a health kit, baby. Alphonse Arena, some Providence College fans. Yeah. How you doing out there? Friar hockey is great. What's your, what's it say? What's your excuse? Oh, boy. <laughs> bananas over there trying to get yeah. a little uh, scrap bananas. going. Watch it, Bananas. You're going to get a penalty there. <laughs> All right, let's look at the highlights from period one. This is the goal by Lyle Wild Goose. Keep an eye on number 18. Scott? Lyle pokes the puck away from Jimmy Burke and it goes down to his partner in the corner. And Bobby Beers kind of gets caught out in no man's land. He, he doesn't know which way to go. And uh, great pass out of the corner by Madigan. And uh, Wild Lyle just puts it in on Matt Del Judas. He really didn't have, Matt didn't have quite a chance there. You know, he was trying to play the 2 on 1 out of the corner. And then the Bears came back at the 16-24 mark. Vince Guadotti simply teed it up. Vince lets a good rocket from the point, and it's uh, deflected by Jimmy Hughes in front. And uh, Romaine never even sees it. It goes in, and the game's tied up at 1-1. Big point for Maine. And we'll see the pass going back to Vinny. He's got a real good shot. He's always he keeps it nice and low right on the ice. And right there, deflection off the skate, and it's in the net. How fast would you say that puck would be traveling about, in a, would you say? I would have to say an average for a defense would probably be 70 to... I don't know, 85, 90 miles an hour. Some guys shoot it up around 100. David Capiano could shoot a puck maybe 100 miles an hour if he gets everything on it. It's tough. It's tough town. Okay, here's the summary. Wild Goose from Mario Obey and Pat Madigan. The Friars had the lead. 
Vince Guadagni from David Capuano and Mario Thayer, and Thayer has made his presence felt this weekend, and the score is one to one as we come to the end of this first period of play. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the face-off for period number two. Remember, the winner tonight is St. Paul, Minnesota bound. to be USDA choice beef. Fresh ground daily with no added processed or imported beef. It's the ground beef you get every day at Shaw's. We expect more at Shaw's because we think you do. Thanks, Grandpa. Shaw's. Quality naturally. Now we take a look at the stat sheet. Pretty even up all the way. Kind of goes with the score of the game. Quality shots for Providence, four of them, and I would dare say those four shots came during the first five or six minutes of the game because that uh, goal by Wild Goose, remember, just seconds before that, uh, Del Judas came up with a tremendous save. Well, the Friars definitely came out and uh, kind of controlled the game for the first few minutes until Maine uh, decided they were going to start playing, and uh, they, they did have a lot of quality shots right in the beginning there. And as the game goes along and we get deeper and deeper into the game, do you think that maybe the sixth game in 10 days for Providence, that's got to take some effect on these guys in black, although it doesn't appear so at the moment? Well, well, Dale, it's hard to say because uh, there's so, many, so much emotion in this game. That tiredness might go right out the window and uh, the guys could be just running on pure adrenaline. Here's a little action in front. You want to know <laughs> how tough it gets. Oh, look at Bennett and uh, Pellerin. Look at that sticked away by Romain. He is some tough. He's, he's showing great concentration tonight. Okay, and here's the save uh, by Del Judas right before the Wild Goose goal. Obey broke in alone. Del Judas came up with a big save, and then on the ensuing faceoff, Wild Goose put that backhander in. So you just never know from moment to moment. All right, both teams are back on the ice, and they surround their goalies, respective goalies, and the Black Bears have an awfully good record here in postseason. You couldn't tell Providence that Friday night, though. Well, Providence came out and played great Friday night. They controlled the game, controlled the neutral zone, and, and uh, Maine can't let them do that tonight for the next two periods, or they might find themselves in trouble. Providence plays well up here. When I was playing up here, they always tough games against the Flyers. They come in here, and they like to try getting things going, and uh, they're, they're a tough team. Would you say that the two toughest teams around in the East for Maine to play are Northeastern and Providence because of their styles? It just seems to be that way. Well, when I was up here, Lowell was real tall. Yes. I mean, Lowell would come in here, and uh, Mr. Riley would have his boys <laughs> pumped up, and he'd come in here flying around. But those three, Lowell, Providence, Northeastern, seems to be the biggest grudge matches, even though people say New Hampshire comes in here and plays tough. I feel the toughest games have been for this team and, and in my past career that uh, Providence and Northeastern and Lowell. All right, play is underway for period two. This is a three-round uh, battle here tonight. We've played one round, and it is a draw, so let's see what happens in round two. Hughes and Major go against the boards now, and Goudreau joins them, and they'll tie it up. Perron and Wild Goose are in the box. And um, were they given majors? No, they were just giving uh, offsetting minors. Okay. So we're back. Five aside. Vitali um, is out there with Corkum and Major. 
It comes back to Beers. He'll tee it up. It's knocked down in front. I don't know if Romain got a stick to that or not. We were blocked in front. It squirts down the other end. There is no icing, and Del Judas plays it. Goudreau intercepts. He tries to center it. On it is no one. Finally, it's Vitale. He'll come up against Hughes. Vitale sends it wide. Romain sticks it to the corner. Vitale keeps working hard on it. Bobak joins in the fray, as does Major, but it squirts free, and taking over is Stephen Higgins. He clears it to center ice. Goudreau tees it up and tries to hit Bennett, but can't. Bennett is back on it. Against Corkum, he takes him to the boards, and Guidotti, and Bobak, and now it's Jim Burke. Pellerin can't hang on to it. Sorowic just dumps it in. Now Vince Guadani just fires it ahead to Capuano. He'll stop and move it in deep. Guadani coming in now. A centering pass, Pellerin, and it's uh, held on to by Romain. Scotty didn't quite get a, a good shot off there. Kind of trickled on Romain. Well, Vinny Guadani went wide on him, and uh, I think Romain thought he was going to shoot because he started going down, and he was down when Pellerin got the puck. You see Vin coming in here. He, he's thinking maybe he's going to try throwing it to the net, and uh, he went down a little premature, and... Ooh. Jeez. <laughs> Scotty would like to get that one back again, I'm sure. Here we see a little extra activity. Who's Major skating by? A little dig to the face. Jimmy Hughes letting him know he's in his, his uh, <laughs> zone. <laughs> Sonder Cook with it for the Friars. He'll bring it out of the zone himself. Ahead it comes to Pat Becker. He breaks in all the way, shoots it on, and there's a save by Del Judas. As there's another scramble in front, and that looked like an innocent enough play, but by the time it was over, Becker got a shot off. Had more penalties called, I think. Let's see, here's Becker moving in on Guadotti. And now they're announcing that there's no goal. Uh, the lightning didn't come on, and I guess the puck did end up behind the line, but uh, no goal. John, John Ferguson going, going hard to the net. His father played for the Montreal Canadiens, and uh, I'm sure he got a little coaching from yeah. in his younger days. His mother was a former ice volley, so you know he was going to be a skater, huh? In breaks Todd Jenkins. Up the side, he comes around the net. He continues to fly. Holds and tries to drive it in deep. It's loose in front and out breaks Providence, but a penalty coming up on the Friars. Number 18, uh, Lyle Wild Goose is going to be going off for hooking. Guy Perron coming off from behind the net, full stride there, and he kind of put the stick in his legs and pulled him down. You'll see Guy come out in front here. Takes off and just a little love tap there. Pulled him down a little bit. Really unnecessary on the part of Wild Goose's because uh, he had a teammate right there to g gather the puck. So Wild Goose goes off, and I'm sure Mike McShane is not very happy with that play. Boston College won. Michigan State won. The series is tied at one. That's being played out in East Lansing, Michigan. The Friars tip it ahead. Gooden can't get to it. Beers is there first. By the way, the winner of that Michigan State BC game takes on Harvard in the semifinal on Thursday night out in Minnesota. The winner of this game gets Minnesota. Dave Capuano with the puck now ahead. It'll come to fire. He'll jump it across to Beers. Back into Mario Fire. In front, there's a shot saved in there and cleared away by Gooden. The Bears almost struck it rich. Boy, it looked like that puck might have hit the post. Dale. A minute 15 left on the penalty to Wild Goose. The Bears get it cranked up. Mario Fire moves around Bow back over the blue line. He's flying. Tries to get it to Robitaille, but can't. It'll stay kept in by Beers. Now Fire. He loses control, but back to Beers. Now Fire, and Beers has it again. They play pass, move it in closer. Capuano has it jump over the stick. Now fire, he loses the handle, and it's fired back down the ice by PC. 40 seconds left on the penalty to PC. The Bears get it cranked up. Beers comes in the zone and stops. Now it's Major. Major trying to move in front. He's squashed on the play. Goudreau goes to the corner and clears it out. 
Bears desperately trying to get something going here on the power play. Bennett and Major and Pellerin and Hughes in the corner. It's kicked in front there by Pellerin. Now it's Scremmon, fakes the shot, goes to the corner. Bennett is working hard. The puck's underneath him, and then we'll have a tie-up. Ten seconds remain on the main power play. It will be Martin Romatai coming in front. Romain really can't find it. Finally, he hits her and hit the top. Hit the crossbar. Wow. A lucky break for Providence. Heroic to the corner, trying to clear, but can't. Now he regains the puck and does send it to center ice. That'll do it on the power play. Wild Goose is back. Del Judas having trouble handling the puck. Gooden almost intercepts it. That was close. Now Belfay gets it outside the zone. Whittemore just fires it back in. Ferguson, Whittemore, and Becker out there for PC. Intercepted Whittemore, can't keep it in. Lalonde will break out. Christiane Lalonde over the blue line. He comes, waits for a man to go for the net. He's knocked down on the play, and PC takes over. Gooden just dumps it in the zone. Becker and Whittemore go after it. Del Judas is on it first, though. Scremmon has it jump over the stick. This is Sonder Cook. He can't keep it in. Finally, it's knocked in there by Jeff Robeson. PC will make wholesale changes. Chris Cambio now for the Bears. Up the left side he comes. He'll dump it in the zone. And we've got a penalty coming up on PC. No, we got a uh, delayed offside call. All right. And they wave that off. And I think you're right. We are going to have a penalty. Have a penalty on, uh, I thought on that. Main, Christian Lalonde. I thought I saw the ref's arm go up. Okay. Roll down Jeff Robinson right on the blue line. Maine's going to have to crank up the 10 seed here and kill this penalty off. Face off will come to the left of Del Judas. And Sean Walsh sends out Major and Beers and Corkum and Burke. And now Woodotti replaces Burke to kill off the penalty. Bowback is out there with Bennett and Obey, Goudreau and Hughes. Face-off won by PC. Goudreau knocks it in deep. Bowback is on it, but two main players are there. Obey with the puck now. Trying to get it to an open man. Spears has it, tries to clear the zone, and does. Now Mike Bowback had a big night. Friday night, moves in with Bennett, can't connect, Bennett goes down, took a little spill, tried to get another call there, but the referee wasn't buying that one. Goudreau in the corner against Guidotti and Major, Obey is there as well, it comes back to the point and it's not the center ice. A minute 20 left on the penalty to Lalonde. Now Goudreau, hauled down by uh, Guidotti, but it comes in deep where Beers will play it. Beers has some open ice. He'll try to fire it up and out. Hughes knocked all the way deep by Capuano's forechecking. Goudreau smartly to obey, and this is Bobak. Around Capuano, he'll come. He stole, holds him up for the moment, and he just has to fire it in deep. With Dotty and Obey go hard to the boards. Still in the corner. Scremmon is there. Scremmon continues to work hard, and then Capuano clears it. Wild Goose is out there along with Becker and Ferguson kept in now Ferguson to Becker back to Ferguson but he can't connect Pellerin intercepts he'll just fire it down the ice and it has been an impotent power play here for PC Maine standing up on the blue line not letting Providence walk right in the zone and set up they're trying to make him dump it and then uh, Maine can get some control and just ice it down we played just over seven minutes here in period two. It is one to one. Maine shorthanded for just another seven seconds. This is Becker trying to go with Wild Goose. Looked offside, but they say no. This is Kane. He tees it up. Blocked by Perron. Nice play there. They try to keep it in the zone, but can't. Breaking out is Vitale. Two on zero. Vitale moves in. He shoots it wide. And the net comes off its mooring, and we'll have a whistle. We'll take a break in the action.
action. Our score is Maine 1, Providence 1. We're coming right back. Beers with him and uh, Jimmy Burke with him, and he pulls the Romaine out of the net and just shoots it wide. Now Burke tears it, tees it up, and it fired uh, to the corner, and Providence is on it. Bob Kramer at center ice runs into Beers, tries to glove it ahead, and uh, finally he gets control of the puck, tries to move it ahead again, and finally a third time he dumps it down on Del Judas. <laughs> Three times a charm if you're Bob Kramer. Now intercepted by Gooden. He fires it on. Butterworth couldn't tip it in front. That was close. And Lalonde takes over from Maine. Chris Cambio through center ice. He's got Belfay and Beers. Beers is on it. Someone loses a stick. It's a Maine player. Lalonde fires it to the corner. Behind the net, Belfay tries to center it, but he can't get it to anybody. Finally, scrimming at the point. In deep, Belfay can't handle it, and they go to the corner again. Butterworth and Beers collide. Oh, man, what a hit that was. And they fire it down the ice, and that's icing. He's got great pressure on. they got to keep this pressure right on Romain. You can see him down there. He's wiping his face off, taking his shield off. Hopefully these uh, six games and ten nights will start catching up with him. Providence Friars involved in a three-game series out in northern Michigan, and look at that hit by Butter uh, by Sondercook. Wow, on Bob Beers. Beers says, I think I'll sit down for a moment. Whoa. So far tonight, I don't think this game has been in, as physically intense as the last two, Friday and Saturday night. Those are some big hits going on. There was a lot more uh, clean, good, hard hits tonight. It's been more up and down, just skating, a little stick work. Now Hughes to Goodrow, who clears the zone. Just under 12 minutes left in period two. Scremen tries to get it ahead to Vitale. Intercepted by Goodrow. Goodrow centers it in front, but only main players are there. Vitale tries to sweep it out of the zone. Finally, it'll be Corcoran lugging it out of there. At center ice, Bob over the blue line. Tries to move around a man and does. Goes around the net, wants to center it, but can't. Now he does, but only Goodrow is there. Away comes PC. Jim Hughes on the fly, goes over the blue line, still moving. His shot is blocked by Corkum, and back come Maine. This is Bob, uh, Bruce Major. He'll fire it in deep, and Maine wants to change. One to one, our score, almost halfway through period number two. The winner is in the final four. Jim Burke for Maine, intercepted by Bobak, and now re-intercepted by Maine as they play in the neutral zone. Higgins is knocked down on the play. Here comes Guy Perron. He'll wait for some help. It comes from Robitaille. Robitaille goes to the corner and holds. Now he plays pass with Jenkins. It'll come back to Burke. He'll tee it up. It goes wide, and Jenkins is still on it in the corner. He moves in front and shoots it. It's blocked in front and cleared out of there by PC. Another icing call coming. Todd Jenkins just flying tonight. He's, he's been all over the all over the ice, just chasing that puck. Get, got great control of there. Came right out in front, took a good shot on Romain. 10.35 left now in period two. And as we mentioned before, no team has had a lead of more than two goals for the entire weekend. Fire and Obey on the draw. Two members from Quebec. It's cleared out of the zone. This is Pat Madigan against Guadotti. Madigan flies in on that left side. Can't get a shot off, though. Guadotti rides him to the board nicely. Now it's intercepted by Providence. Still Madigan scrambling for it. This is Wild Goose, and we got a penalty coming up on Providence. 
No, we're having a penalty on Vinny Gadotti. I think he might have picked up a 10-minute major. He had a few. He had a few words for. Uh, here we'll see what happened here a little bit better. A little bit of a cross check right in the jaw. So what's going on here? There should have been a call right there. I, oh boy. Jeez. I thought that's what he was calling that cross check. Well, I'll tell you, that hurt me dearly because Guidotti, he's also going to get a, a two-minute penalty. And that hurts me because we told you in between periods. Look over at Sean Walsh. He's looking over at the penalty box, looking at Vinny, just kind of shaking his head a little bit. Here, we'll take another look at it. Oh, okay, it's a two-minute misconduct penalty. We'll get it straight here sooner or later. Are they calling it 10 minute two? No, we're going to have to. The PA announced to put up two minutes. He didn't have to put up anything, though. They don't put anything on the scoreboard when they give him a 10 minute misconduct. But I thought I heard him say a two minute two. Well, we'll wait and see. And, um, whatever the case, Vince is on. And that hurts Maine's defensive core because we're without Keith Carney to start with. I'm sure if Vince could do that over again, he would have yeah. had nothing to say. All right, so it is a 10-minute misconduct. Maine does not lose the man advantage. They just lose the man. Fire. He comes across to Pellerin. Pellerin fires it. It hits the glass to the right side of Romaine and PC takes over. Becker can't connect on the pass and so Beers takes over. Intercepted by Becker and it comes right on Del Judas. That's why you've got to be awake at all times. You never know where that thing's going to deflect. Now Capuano tries to move in but there were four black jerseys in his face. Now Pellerin to fire. Mario tries to make a move but can't. Decides to back up. Beers tees it up and held on to by Romaine. We'll take a break. Our score remains tied at one. In a world of warped, cracked, leaky wooden doors, one door stands alone. The beautiful fiber classic by Thermatru. Rugged fiberglass and solid insulating foam that looks just like wood, but stands out the blistering heat and biting cold. The great-looking, trouble-free Fiber Classic by Thermatru. An open-and-shut case for greater home beauty. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. Back at Alfond Arena, I'm Dale Duff, along with Scott Smith, bringing you Game 3 in this best-of-three series between Maine and Providence. Perron with a shot that's sticked away nicely by Romaine. Butterworth tries to clear the zone, but can't. It's kept back in. Robitaille goes behind the net with Soroic, and Kane takes over for PC. He'll try to lug it outside the zone. It comes to center ice. Link is on it. The puck jumps into the penalty box area, though, and so we'll have a face-off near center ice. Tony Link's been playing real strong for me, and uh, got the call to uh, Keith Carney out tonight. Playing real strong. Played well last night. Had a few shifts on Friday night, and uh, he's coming along real good for Sean Walsh. And he'll be out there a lot more for the next 10 minutes while Vince sits in the box. Vince Guadagni. Off for a misconduct penalty. Nine minutes now left in period two. 1-1 one, one is our score. In front, intercepted. No, it isn't intercepted by Providence, and it comes down to scrimmage as Link was nailed. That's icing on Maine, fired in there by uh, Perron, I guess, and we'll come down and have a face-off to the other end. Maine doesn't seem to be quite in sync at the moment. You see the hit on Tony Link here. Boom. Butterworth gets his hands up a little bit. Butterworth's a little guy, so he thinks maybe he can get away with things like that. Back on the draw. Finally skated away by Jimmy Burke. And now Bob Beers. Ahead to Major. They clear the zone. Vitaly races after it. But out of the net is Romaine. And he's caught out there. And he finally gets back in net as Providence gives him some help. The puck squirts behind the 
net, but Rick Bennett is on it for PC. Well, Maine came way out of his net, and I don't think he know exactly what he wanted to do with the puck. Now go back. Major is working hard on the forecheck. Nice move by Robeson to get by him. This is Rick Bennett. He'll just dump it in, and Providence will chase. Burke is on it, though, for Maine. He avoids a hit by Bennett. He wound up hitting the board by himself. Now go back against Cambio. This is Burke. He's nailed by Higgins, and we've got a whistle, and I believe we've got an offside call. Boy, I'll tell you, Higgins and Burke collided over on that side. Brian Belfay, the big rugged man for the University of Maine from Framingham, Mass. And here's the hit I was talking about. Look at that. Boom. <laughs> Higgins and Burke. A couple of big gentlemen meeting each other right there at the blue line. A couple of big defensemen. All right, Jim Hughes fires it wing to wing to Wild Goose. He'll have to regroup and give up the puck to Capuano. Now it's knocked in. Quickly cleared out of there by Maine. On it is Providence. Hughes connects with Obey, who just dumps it in the zone, and they'll go after it. Del Judas sweeps it around to Lalonde on the open corner, but on it is Madigan. Now Hughes. He'll fire it on Del Judas, who sticks it aside smartly. Belfay ahead to Cambio. Chris tries to move around. He's got Lalonde and Belfay. Belfay goes to the corner, and Lalonde is there. Hughes runs into him, and PC fires it to the open wing. Madigan up the right side he comes but Providence is changing up so he gets no help and they give away the puck to get a line change now Jim Burke who has played a lot of ice time for penalty coming up on Providence Pat Becker is going to be going off he had Christian Lawn right by the he was Christian was going off for a line change and uh, he was ready to give him a little shot before he got off the ice and he's gone for two minutes for interference Mike McShane is going crazy over there on the Providence bench, saying, why? Mike McShane. goes off for two minutes at the 6.54 mark. And so let's see if the Bears can get something cranked up on the power play. Fire is out there along with Corkum and Robitaille, Capuano and Beers. Gooden and Kramer and Sorowick and Bennett try to kill the penalty for Providence. It comes to the corner and Bennett is on it, but so too is Maine. This is Bob Corkum. Has some skating room. Fakes the shot. Behind the net is fire. He's tricky with it. Comes in front and stops. And there's a shot on his stop again. It goes to the corner. Kramer is fighting hard with Bennett along with Corkum and fire comes in again and it's worked out of there by fire. He tries to center it to Beers. He shoots it this wide. It goes behind the net and is still loose. Finally, it's cleared out of there by Bennett. It winds up in the stands. All kinds of black bear pressure. They put the pressure on big time right now. Mario Fire is so tricky when he gets behind that net. Watch him. Nothing out in front to pass to so Instead of giving it away, he comes right out in front himself. Had two shots from point blank range and couldn't get anything behind Romain. One thirteen now left on the Providence penalty to Becker. BC and Michigan State still in a tie. That game, I'm sure, is as nail biting as this one. Now Goudreau fires it down the ice for the Providence College Friars, and uh, the Bears will crank it up from their end. Scremen is out there with Perron now. Major and Pellerin are out there, as well as Capuano. In the corner goes Major and Sondercook. This is Guy Perron with skating room. Back to Capuano. He tees it up. Scott Pellin right in there looking for the rebound. David Cap 
Capuano shot right on net. He didn't give him anything to pick up. And Capuano is using a wooden stick this weekend for the first time this year. And he's getting all kinds of speed on it. A lot of action right in front. Scott Perella and Park trying to hang in tough there. Wow. The left pad saved by Romain saves the day for PC. Romain's a small fellow, huh? 5'9", 160. Kind of a rogy Vachon type of thing, huh? Back to Capuano, Maine on the power play for another half a minute. It comes back to Capuano. Now fire intercepted by Province of Cerrone. Now it's center right, it's just dumped in there by Wild Goose. 20 seconds left on the penalty to Becker. Now Thayer, moving in with Perron. He shoots it high! Romain with a great glove save there. Back it comes to Stremen. He'll tee it up. It never reaches Romain. Down in front is Soroic. He gets back up. Here is Perron Pellerin. And now Thayer. Thayer trying to get it back to Capuano. And instead reverses direction and goes behind the net. Sweeps it in front and goes back behind. Bennett fires an open side. And the penalty is over. We're skating on even strength and finally it's cleared down the ice that will be icing on pc we'll take a break in the action our score remains main one providence one we're coming back to alphond after this you know what you want. GMC Jimmy. GMC 4x4. GMC Pickup. And here's where you always get it for less. At Lee GMC. Right now, an 89 GMC S15 Pickup, just $69.95. In Auburn. At Lee GMC. An 89 GMC Jimmy's just $12,699. In Auburn. At Lee GMC. And an 89 full-size GMC Sierra 4x4 is just $11,995. In Auburn. At Lee GMC. Get the best deal. Plus a 50-year quality reputation. Buy from Lee because you can always get it for less at Lee. All right, here's Thayer on the power play. The wraparound shot like before. This one squirts wide. Thayer is so tricky. Mike McShane knows it so much. He's still in that crouch. <laughs> Mario's hungry. He hasn't had a goal in a few months, so he's coming off that broken leg injury. He had 10 points in six games, I think it was, before he went down with that broken leg. He was red, red hot. Now Sonda Cook just drives it in for Providence. Just over four minutes now left in period number two. Still nothing gives. It's 2-2. Two -two. It's 1-1, uh, one -one, our score. Now Jeff Robeson intercepted by Maine. Now re-intercepted by Sonder Cook. Paul Sonder Cook tries to move in and does. Against Beers. Goes to the board. Beers rubs him out of the play. Link and Gooden go after it. In front, Becker with the loose puck. He shoots it saved by Del Judas. And Maine skates it out of there. Defensive play by Todd Whittemore to prevent a breakout for Maine. That was close on Maine's part for giving up a goal. Becker just kind of hung around there and almost broke in. Now that's an offside play on Maine, and the faceoff will come back outside the zone. Great man, save, oh man. Great man. save by Matt Del Judas. Oh, wow. Becker was just hanging around in front there, and that puck just came right to him. Here it is. Beers takes his man to the boards. The puck is loose. Here's Becker, 17. Becker just comes right out and centers it out. Watch Matt Del Judas play that pad right on the ice and makes a great save. Boom. Huh. Great end-to-end -end action in this all-important game at Alphonse Arena. It's one-to-one. -one. Intercepted by Butterworth. He tries to break in. And uh, Burke stands him up. And a penalty coming up on Maine. Jimmy Burke is going for a cross-check or something. We're going to have to take a look at that one again. High stick, they're calling it. Only one's going. Both could be going. Watch both sticks come up. I think if the main fans could see that on a screen here, the place would go a little crazy. <laughs> Jimmy Burke, two minutes for high sticking. And so with 324 left in period number two, the Bears have some work to do. Kill off this penalty. Obey wins the 
draw, but the puck squirts back outside the center ice. Goudreau has to hurry to get on it and does. Bennett, another penalty coming up on me. Oh, my. Bobby Corkin is going to be going for holding. Rob Goudreau picked up the puck right on the blue line and takes off with it, and Bobby put in great pressure on him, but then reaches out and puts his hand out a little bit and gives him a little tug. Sean Walsh with a worried look on his face and with good reason because reaches out and gives him a little tug. Goudreau probably can feel that one right down. Now, Sean Walsh sends Capuano over to the ref to kind of get a ruling. And, and uh, Walsh is going crazy over there on the bench. He cannot believe that uh, that was called. So now, Maine has some heavy-duty work to do. For a minute and 45, PC will skate two men strong. This is Jim Hughes, wing to wing to Bennett. He moves in and holds. Maine will try to form a triangle here and let him pass, but try not to get a shot off. Goodrow in now to Bobak. Back it comes to Goodrow. Now to Hughes. He moves in. There's a shot and a score! John Ferguson! Matt Del Judas strike coming across on that one. He was expecting a low shot. Ferguson put it right upstairs in the upper corner, and uh, Matt really didn't have a chance. And John Ferguson puts the PC Friars back in front. On the power play, the two-man advantage power play. Ferguson makes the pass out of the corner, and he just comes right off to the side there. Rather, Obey picks up the puck and just throws it in the upper corner. Good heads up play by Jimmy Hughes. He sees Obey standing wide open and just slides it right down to him. So Mario Obey rather than John Ferguson, the PC Friars don't care because they've regained the lead. And the Bears only get one man back. So they, the Friars are still on the power play. It's five on four, though, now. Two and a half minutes left in period two. Del Judas comes back to play the puck in Maine with Guy Perron and Vitali break away. Vitali skating hard against Soroic. Soroic wins the battle, though, and skates out of there. 109 left on the penalty. And the Bears are skating five on four, and in breaks Ferguson. He moves in, saved by Del Judas. Kane coming right back strong. You can't have a letdown after a big goal like that, or a, or a good team will come right back and score another one. And Matt Del Judas continues to work hard in nets. You really can't fault him for that goal uh, when you're skating five on three. There's so much territory to cover. One important thing right now is the main players don't hit the panic button. There's a lot of hockey left to be played. 22 minutes. Now it's Rob Goodrow tries to fire it in. Pellerin knocks it down. Kept in, though. And another good play by Goodrow to keep it in. This is Obey. He tees it up. Score! Mario Obey again! Mario Obey had, had Rick Bennett wide open in front and he chose to take the shot. He teed it up and let it go. Keep Matt, Matt Del Judas on the blocker side. Quebec, Mario Obey. You see Matt coming out trying to cut down the angle a little bit, sliding over, and it just snuck between his arm and his uh, chest protector. That's a tough break for Matt. It was a power play goal, and so the last two goals by Obey, the first one came with a two-man advantage. This one comes with a one-man advantage, and all of a sudden, it's a three-to-one game, and the crowd is stunned. Goudreau an assist. Goudreau picked up an assist on the first goal as well. And so Goudreau has been a big factor. And 
someone gets a misconduct for Maine. Maine now has four men in the box. We'll need to pick up the uh, penalty. It's a misconduct on Maine. And a Providence player is knocked down again. And I thought there was going to be another penalty on Maine. But out breaks Guy Perron. He's ridden off the play by PC. They clear the zone to center right where Link is on it for Maine. Link just fires it in. We're back skating five aside. But Maine has plenty of men in the box. Now John Butterworth moves it wing to wing. It'll come to Kramer. He moves in, fires it weakly on Del Judas. He makes the glove save. Three to one. Providence has jumped into the lead, but here comes Todd Jenkins. He moves in one on one. He can't get the shot off. Hughes does a good job blocking it. He centers it in front, but it jumps over the stick of Perron. Now Scremen tees it up in front. It never reaches Romaine. A minute left in period two. Obey breaks in. He shoots to by Del Judas. Someone's got to put a man on Del Obey, and he's flying all over the place. Good to see Matt pick up that puck like that. He's had a lot of pressure on him. By the way, the, the misconduct penalty comes to uh, Scott Peller. When I didn't see what happened, it must have been after the uh, goal, I guess, or something. He must have said something. And Scott Pellerin is off for a 10-minute misconduct. Guadotti is still in the box. This is Obey again. He's had some luck shooting the puck, so he just lets it go. Play on. It goes to the corner. Bobak tries to get a handle to it, but can't. Uh, Goudreau keeps it in smartly. Del Judas plays it around the net. On it is Bennett. Watch out for him. Finally, Del Judas sticks it to the corner. The Bears getting pinned in their own net. Then, finally, Lalonde breaks away. Christian moves over the blue line. Holds. Finds it. Oh. There it went wide. Now behind the net, Bobak wraps it around the dasher. It's Bobak and Bennett, and we've got a penalty coming up on PC. The penalty is on Providence College, and it will be their big man, Rick Bennett. Give Bobby Beers a little extra shot over there on the board. Kowalski was watching the whole play. Here we'll see it. Kind of hold on to Bobby a little bit. And so with 12 seconds left in period number two, the Bears will be on the power play. And they would desperately like to get something going in this final 12 seconds because then they've got uh, an in-between period to, to cool down and and um, propose themselves compose a little bit and relax yeah. and uh, have a little meeting and see what's going on here. There you see the graphic that tells all. Um, it certainly looks like Maine is going to trail after two periods tonight. But I say when these two teams have been playing, as we've seen this weekend, throw the stats out. An offside play on Maine, they touch it up and it's going to be offside, so they let PC clear it outside the zone. That'll do it in the second period. So the Providence Friars skate off the ice with a 3-1 to one lead over the homestanding Maine Black Bears. After two periods, it's Providence College 3, the University of Maine 1. We'll be back for in-between period action in just a moment. Okay, I got it. Last year, almost two million families stopped buying regular Pepsi, and almost a half million moved to Diet Coke. That's more than to any other major soft drink. Every Weather Shield window and door is crafted with the utmost care and attention to detail. That's why they've become the builder's choice. With over a quarter century of experience, they're producing some top quality wood windows to meet some very special specifications. Distinctive wood windows and doors built from the finest quality materials. Weather Shield windows built for you. Don't just admire them, ask for them at your Weather Shield dealer. 
available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. All right, back at El Pond Arena, here's the final charge by the Black Bears as uh, they get the shot off on Romaine. In front, look at Jimmy Burke. Oh, with the wraparound backhander just went wide. That's the one I thought. Yeah, yeah just redirects that puck a little bit. Oh, it was boy. just wide. It's a tough break for Jimmy. Well, in the span of about a minute's time, this game quickly changed from a 1-1 game to a 3-1 game. That was a tremendous shift in momentum, wasn't it, Scott? Well, there were a lot of penalties and stuff, and that might have screwed the guys up a little bit. One thing that we have to remember is uh, you, you can't worry about things you have no control over. There's going to be penalties called, and uh, once they're called, there's nothing you can do about it. So you have to worry about the things that you can take care of yourself. And um, Vince Guidotti picked up the 10-minute misconduct penalty. Scott Pellerin is off for uh, a good part the first half of the third period because he picked up a mis misconduct penalty and so we'll see what happens here um, as we begin period three in a few minutes for right now though we want to tell you an interesting story about the bears off ice if we can you know a few years ago the red sox made the kangaroo court thing a familiar thing for new england sports fans well this year the main hockey team started its own kangaroo court and bruce major is the judge now the system works this way you just have to watch out because you can get fined for the silliest things this has got to be probably the biggest fine of the year. Dan Fowler didn't know where he was going, going backwards, shattering Doc Leonard's wrists. Oh, no question. <laughs> what, what can we decide on that for a fine? Is it at least 50 cents, I would think. Is that a little 75? All right. The third day the other day in a row, I think, you know, Bruce came in with the same clothes on. I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> No, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it was only two and a half. Oh, no. I can't remember if it was Sunday or Saturday or Monday. All the coaches were late for practice. Every single one of them. Preparing. Preparing for the playoffs. Wait. Oh, guys. Couldn't we get up a little bit? Five minutes earlier? Seven minutes earlier? Quarter for coach. I think it really helps. It, it always boosts morale, you know, because everyone gets laughing at one another, you know, and it brings everybody together, you know, and everyone's telling little secrets about what some guy did in the dorm or, and uh, I think it's really good, you know, especially the start of the year, guys get to know one another a little bit better, and I think it really brings the team closer together. How about Barkley snapping yesterday? Uh, automatic answers. Wasn't there. There's always got the answers. How about Barkley for always having the answers? Oh, yeah. Who's have a vote? Who's have a vote? Hockey's fresh All right, All right. great sports information director Ian McCaw. That's a 50 cent. As you can see, his head is much too big for the uh, helmet he's wearing. His <laughs> bottom it's kind of on his nose. <laughs> Embarrassment to all Canadians as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but I think that's got to be at least 50 cents. I got, uh, I got Dick for a possible credit, though. Uh, Doc Leonard was ready to throw the uh, hiding board he made away, and Dick suggested he spray it with silicone, and that Mario could slide on it with that, and it worked, so it could be oh, a possible right. credit. Who votes for credit? <laughs> okay, that's Justice Maine hockey style. Scott Smith, what do you think? Well, I, I'm glad my name never comes up in that. I know uh, you and Bruce Glazier have been in there a little bit. That's uh, right. No I, I one keeping myself clean. No, no one is uh, getting escaping from that uh, kangaroo court. It's a nice thing, though. I think it keeps them loose. All right, you see the story. It's Providence three and Maine one. We'll come back with more intermissions things for you after this. It's a little word. But the word yes makes things happen, especially when spoken by a fleet bank loan officer. It helps more businesses produce a better product. More families find a better home. More children get a better education. To us, that's more than a positive outlook on lending. It's a positive outlook on life. If you've never enjoyed buying a car, then you've never been to Brunswick Ford. The 100% commitment to you by our professional sales staff, our qualified service technicians, and our knowledgeable parts department make us all winners on Brunswick Ford's team. So next time you're looking for a new used car, put Brunswick Ford on your shopping list. We've got the largest selection this year, the Probe, GL, LX, and GT, and Escort Ponies, LX, two-door, four-door, and wagons. So from the winning team here at Brunswick Ford, to the University of Maine Black Bears, Let's go, man! 
And welcome back to Alphon Arena. We're in between the second and third period. The Providence Friars have a 3-1 lead over the Maine Black Bears. Well, joining me at this point in time is Tucker D. Eduardo of the NCAA, and uh, he is the director of championships for the NCAA. Um, Tucker, let me first of all ask you, it's a great title, but what does it mean? I, I know there's a lot of work involved. Well, that's, that's true. Um, my responsibilities basically are for approximately 40 of the 77 championships we put on, um, and I uh, work directly with Division I ice hockey, and uh, that's why I'm here this weekend. And it's kind of like a homecoming for me, kind of enjoyable to get back to the, the state of Maine. Uh, I went to high school in Brunswick, so this is a lot of fun. My first trip to Alphon Arena, and I'm just very impressed with it. Now, you've got the big thing for college hockey coming up next weekend, the Final Four. Of course, everybody here is hoping that Maine is involved in it. Uh, tell us a little bit about St. Paul. Tell us a little bit about the Final Four. Well, St. Paul, uh, they have a civic group that's really serving as sponsoring agency. It's done a great job with the event this year. We're going to have, for a sellout, we've got 15,600 tickets sold. Um, it's just going to be a spectacular event. And I think uh, they're going to take uh, college ice hockey to a new level uh, with the event, having to be a sellout six weeks in advance and, uh, of the announcing of the teams. And it's very exciting, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure the people in Maine would like to, to be a part of that and see their Maine Black Bears be a part of that. Let me ask you this financially. What does it mean for a team to get to the Final Four? Well, it, it would vary, and you add all the rounds of competition, the series that lead up to it. But basically, it, it's fairly, it can be fairly lucrative. Um, Right now, we the NCAA guarantees transportation and per diem for all the teams that go, so they have no expenses. And then they share on the receipts, and uh, it, it can mean a, a good amount of money, anywhere between twenty-five and, and thirty-five thousand dollars for a share. Um, so a team, uh, the two four teams that go in the finals get three share. Everybody else gets one share. So it can mean a significant amount of revenue. So we're talking seventy-five thousand to over a hundred thousand. That's correct. That's correct. And I'm sure all the leagues have uh, some kind of sharing or revenue package. So and again, it depends on how many tickets you sell, the size of the arena, and whatever, and and, and what takes place. Of course, you TV folks can help on that too, <laughs> as, as you as you're aware. Yes. Well, Tucker, thank you very much. Enjoy the third period, and uh, I know that most folks around here are hoping the Black Bears will come back and can join you in St. Paul next weekend. Dale, thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, having me on, and uh, I think there's a lot of people rooting for the Black Bears out there, and they, they've represented uh, the Maine, the state, and their program very well. Okay, Tucker, thanks thank you. very much. In between periods, it's Providence 3, Maine 1. We'll come back after this. for the new 106 WIGY. You know, Maine has really love a decent radio station. Now, that's why a lot of us are tuning into the new 106 WIGY. They're playing the hits of a whole generation. And, you know, there's songs you can really get into while you're tending to less appealing matters. <laughs> of course, them disc jockeys do talk kind of weird. But when they say they're playing Maine's hottest hits, they ain't kidding. The new 106 WIGY. back at Alphond Arena as we show you some of the action from period number two. There's the first goal by Mario Obey on a five-on-three situation, Scott Smith. Well, he uh, catches Matt Del Duda sliding to his right, and uh, Matt, Matt was probably anticipating a little shot because uh, he shot it right off the pass and uh, put it right, right over Matt's glove. It was a tough break for Matt. All right, that made the score two to one. And then, less than a minute later, this. Mario Obey again. Lined it up and just took a shot, a good hard shot, and uh, beat Matt on his, his blocker side. And I think that might have been the first shot right after the goal. You know, that's a tough, uh, tough break for Matt again. But hopefully, you know, uh, Matt, Matt will come back and uh, the Blackers will come back and give it a shot. So the only two goals in period number two come from the guys in black. Mario Obey give Rob Goudreau and Jimmy Hughes the assist. And then...
Just moments later, Obey again, Goudreau again with an assist, and it is three to one Providence. There's still a lot of hockey to be played here, Dale. And we know that the Bears, when they get scoring, they can score in spurts. So we have 20 full minutes left to go. We'll take a break and be back with the opening face-off for period three in just a moment. Central Maine Power is putting its two-way radio network to work for you and your community. The program is a new communications link called Radio Watch. Thanks for stopping. Can you help me? No problem. I'll have a dispatcher call for assistance. CMP vehicles equipped with this sticker use their two-way radios to assist stranded motorists, help lost children, or to report accidents or fires. Okay, a dispatcher is called for help. Radio Watch, a community service from CMP. Hey, check it out. You won't believe the selection of way rad sneakers and athletic footwear at Levinsky's. Too rad for mom and dad. They're just what every kid needs. Levinsky's is your canvas sneaker headquarters. Converse, Vans and Visions, plus tree torn and Keds. Skate on down to Levinsky's and get a pair today. Get to Levinsky's and start looking good today. Levinsky's, Portland, Route 1 in Freeport and in the Wyndham Mall. Back at Alphonse Arena as we take a look at second period statistics. Face-offs won by Mean. That sticks out at you. Quality shots. Well. <laughs> for, for the action, that wasn't a second period. The shots that Providence had on net, they went in. And, you yeah. know, I'd like to have a, a total shot uh, record for that period because Maine had some great pressure and some great opportunities. <laughs> There's a little editorial comment from a Maine fan. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hockey fans, Dale, they're some of the craziest people around. Very ingenious sometimes, I've got to say. <laughs> The crowd is up and standing and cheering, trying to give the Bears an emotional lift as uh, we get ready to begin period number three. I would like to bet in uh, that locker room with Sean Walsh and hear what he had to say to the boys. Uh, well, you've been in there many times before. What? Give us an example. I mean, would he really rant and rave, do you think? Or, or uh, what, what would be his... Uh, effort in there, would you say? I think Rand and Raven stage would probably be done. I mean, he's going to lay the facts on the table and tell what they have to do. You know, it's up to them. Sean Walsh can't go out and score goals and, and take the body and do things of that sort. So it's up to the players. And uh, I'm sure, you know, there was some heated conversation, but I'm sure he just laid out also just uh, the facts about the game. And if you're Mike McShane, what did you tell your troops? Don't change anything. Keep playing the way you're playing. You know, play strong in the neutral zone and uh, try making Maine cough up the puck. And as we start period number three, remember Maine is on the power play. And what they really need to do is get something lit up here on the early stages of the power play. A minute 48 remaining in the penalty to Rick Bennett. And we are underway in the third and final period of this wonderful three-game series. Mario Thayer dumps it in for Maine. Romain is on it first, and now Sondercook tries to flip it outside the zone, but can't. Capuano in front is knocked down. Obey can't clear the zone. There's Corkum, and finally it's swept out of there by Bob Kramer. Or check that, uh, Lyle Walkers. A minute and 20 now left on the main power play. Fire tries to start away and does. He's hauled down by Sondercook. Penalty coming up on Providence. Now, Maine will have a two-on-man advantage. There's a break for Maine. They're going to have to take full opportunity here. Now, they desperately need to get something past Romain. They will skate five on three. Here's Sondercook against Thayer. Sondercook giving him a little uh, pull on the stick, and uh, he goes down, and uh, he's in the box. So Sondercook sits out for two minutes. Rick Bennett is off for another minute and 11 seconds. And this crowd is the loudest it has been tonight. Now, Capu 
Cayuano in front, it goes wide. Behind the net is Ca uh, Cambio. Now it's teed up by Capuano in front as the shot it hits the crossbar. Back outside the zone, it hits the goalpost or the crossbar or something there behind Romine. Now Cambio is on it again. Capuano. This is Mario Fire. Moving in, stopped in front. Fire is on it again. Maine on a five-on-three situation. Capuano in front. There's a shot that's taken in wide. It comes back to Cambio, and it's kept in by uh, Capuano. Now fire. Intercepted by Boback for the moment. It goes to the corner where Soroic is on it first. He gets it outside the zone. 17 seconds left on the penalty to Bennett. A two-man advantage for Maine. Now it is Mario Obey. Watch out for him. Fire does a nice job. Mario Fire busts in, and that's offside on Maine. Perron was in too soon. Chris Cameo with the best opportunity on that ship. David Capuano with a hard shot from the point, and uh, Chris is waiting off to the side for it to come off the backboard, and he, it looked like it might have hit the, the post and the crossbar. Here we'll see the pucks out to the point. Good shot comes right off Chris Cambio. Boom. Off the post. Yeah. That's two tonight. As you said earlier, goaltender's best friends are those pipes. Seven seconds left on the penalty to Bennett. 56 seconds left on the penalty to Sondercook. Vitale is out there with Robitaille and Major and Guadotti and Scremen for me. Ferguson is out there with Becker and Kane for the Friars. Now it's intercepted by Obey, or by Ferguson rather. He moves it in deep, continuing to forecheck nicely. Major takes over. Now Becker wraps him up for the moment, and the penalty is over to Bennett. Now we're five on four. Maine still with a man advantage, but Bennett up ahead, Major intercepts. Wing to wing, he connects with Robitaille. Robitaille busts in the right side. Looking for help, he sends it to the open corner. On it is Becker, and he sends it outside the zone. 20 seconds, now left in the penalty to Sondercook. Now breaking in is Vitaly. Can he get to the puck? No, Bennett gets to it first. To the corner they go. Robitaille is on it. He fires it back to Scremen, off to Guadotti, and it goes outside the zone. And now the penalty is over to Sondercook, and the Friars have killed off a two-man advantage for Maine. Remember this point in the game. That's a big moment for the Providence College Friars. They ice the puck, but no matter at this point for them. You know, it's not, it's not a, a, a position or a chance that Maine isn't getting those chances, and, and they're not. They're getting into great positions. They're just not getting any breaks. The puck bounces off somebody's stick. Uh, the pass is made, and it jumps over somebody's stick, and there's a shot on net, and it hits the post. And boy, they're just not getting any breaks. Sean Wall's trying to get the guys motivated. Another save by Romaine as they tee it up in front. There it is. Oh, man, oh, man. David Capuano shooting a puck from the point or faking the shot and sliding it down to Guy Perron. Back to live action. The Friars can't clear it out. Belfe is on it. Can't get the shot off. Butterworth breaks out. Three on three for the moment. Ahead it goes to Kramer, but they clear it back to center ice, does Maine. And now Soroic is on it. Soroic moves around Beers. He's still with the puck. Stops, goes, fires it in front. It goes across the front, and Butterworth can't get to it. Belfe, now it is Kramer. Up against the boards with Belfe. He takes him down. Link and Butterworth come in, and the puck still is loose. Now it's Kramer. He's still with the puck, flips it in front. Beers knocks it down. Nice play by Bob Beers. 16 and a half minutes left in this game. It is Providence 3, Maine 1. This is Christian Lalonde. He tries to move in the right side against Hughes. Goes to the board, flips it over to Thayer. Now he tries to work it back. It flips up into the netting and will have a tie-up. Real difficult not to get frustrated in a game like this. I Maine's mean, got to keep its composure and uh, just keep working. You knock on a door long enough, it's gonna open. Here it is. There's a look at that. Oh, right out in front. Almost tipped. 
Del Judas had to be quick there. Back to live action. They can't connect wing to wing with Obey. Main takes over for the moment, but back on it is Jeff Robeson. He fires it in from center ice. Del Judas is on the puck. Behind the net, it's uh, moved ahead. There's a shot taken by uh, Obey, by Sondercook, rather, that went way high. Now it's center ice. Jenkins tries to break free, and now Capuano does. He fires it, and it winds up in the balcony. Great play there by Todd Jenkins. He was in a lot of traffic, and he made the little extra move, maybe perhaps taking a hit to make the play, and slides into David Cap, and uh, Cap, Cap just couldn't get in there and get a good shot on net. crowd at Alphonse Arena, more than 4,000 of them, trying to whoop it up a little bit and get some Bears motivated. As you look at the main bench with Burke and others, a tired defensive four playing without Keith Carney again tonight. He's out with pneumonia. Vince Guadotti was out for 10 minutes with a misconduct penalty, so Beers and Scremen and Burke have played a lot tonight. We'll uh, redo the faceoff. 1540 left in the game. Vitali and Bobak on the draw. It's loose. Finally, Maine comes away with it. Bob Corkum tries to move in, centers it. There's a shot saved by Romaine. How did he see that? That shot might have deflected off of Providence defense before it got to him. Now Rick Bennett moves it just inside the zone, and Bobak goes after it. Corkum intercepted for the moment. Now it is by PC. Kane just dumps it in on Del Judas. How did Romaine see that last shot? I'll never know. A lot of action right in front there. This is Vitale to Major. Bruce comes over the blue line, winds it up, it goes wide and bounces right back to Romaine, and he decides to hold on. He has to keep the pressure on right, right down low around Romaine there. To try picking up a couple garbage goals, because he's been real hot so far tonight on those long shots. Here we'll see that save. Oh. I mean, he doesn't even know where it is. He stopped it with his midsection or with one of his pads, and I don't think he had any idea. Let's watch it from this angle. Look, look, yeah, he was even he was looking on the other side. Uh, it's just one of those breaks we were talking about. All right. Back comes Pat Becker for PC. Ahead he goes to Todd Whittemore, who just dumps it in deep. He's taken down on the plane by Burke. And uh, as they go to the boards, Jenkins and his man, the gate swings open, and so we'll have a stoppage of play. That's what you call a heavy hit when the door flies open. Well, I've seen a lot of players get injured like that along the, the players' butt benches and the penalty boxes. Those doors sometimes pop open, and you, you stop pretty quick when you hit that uh, railing. 14.44 left in the game. And unless the Bears can come back, it's 1444 left in their season. The winner tonight goes to St. Paul and the final four. It's three to one, Providence College. The Bears desperately trying to get something by Romaine. Now Becker against the boards. He fights with Jenkins. Jenkins goes down, and now Becker has the puck. He clears the zone, sends it ahead to Whittemore, but he can't control the puck. He goes back and four checks, but Perron Ooh. takes over. Now it's center right. Jenkins over the blue line. He leaves it for Robitaille. It's swept away by PC. Whittemore and Shane Kane go to the corner. Now it's behind the net where Soroic is on it. He smartly sends it outside the zone and down the ice. Will it be icing? Yes. I think Providence need a changer. They'll take that icing. We'll take a break in the action. It's Providence 3, main 1. We're coming right back. In a world Beautiful fiber classic by Thermatru. Rugged fiberglass and solid insulating foam that looks just like wood, but stands up to blistering heat and biting cold for years. The great looking trouble free fiber classic by Thermatru. An open and shut case for greater home beauty. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. All right, back at Alphonse Arena, I'm Dale Duff along with Scott Smith. Game three of a best-of-three series, Maine and Providence, 
The Friars with a 3-1 to one lead. Maine putting pressure on, but can't get it by Romaine. Lalonde tees it up. It's a blocker save by Romaine. Capuano keeps it in deep. There's a centering pass, but it's ridden out of there by Hughes. To the corner, and finally cleared out of there by David Gooden. Now breaks Kramer. Kramer is in a low. He shoots. Saved by Del Newman. a big save and finally the puck ends up into the stands where we'll have another faceoff. and Del Judas stopped Bob Kramer from point blank range. Kramer tried skating Maddie right into the net and kind of shot it right at him. We'll take a look at it here coming down hard on him. He didn't really have good, good control until he got down low and uh, Maddie slid right over and didn't give much to shoot at. Looked like he might have been shooting for the five hole which is right between the goaltender's pads. And so the Bears remain down by two, three to one, with 13.27 left in the game. 13.27 and counting. Jeff Robeson goes back. That's icing on the main. John Walsh, the tie is loose. The fingers are moving. He's nervous and with good reason. Talking with Bruce Crowder. I don't know. There's not much they can do. They, as you mentioned, Scott, they've received a lot of chances. They've had a lot of chances. It's not many breaks. We've still got 13 minutes of play, and uh, things have changed around with less time than that. Mario Obey will take the draw with Martin Robitaille of Maine. It is won by Obey for the moment. It scorch in front where Bob Beers will get a handle to it, but not quite. That is Pat Madigan against the boards. It comes around to the back of the net. On it is Obey. Obey's played a strong game. Madigan with a shot that goes right through the crease. Sondercook keeps it in deep. Obey is there. He's crunched to the boards by Robitaille. Now it's Wild Goose. Back it'll come to Robeson. There's a shot on that Del Judas holds on to. And it is Providence keeping the pressure on now. Lyle Wild Goose is right down there in the slot, and he's working hard. Him and Jimmy Burke were tied up there fighting back and forth, and uh, Providence is showing great intensity in the main zone. 12.53 left in this game. And back in that familiar crouch, Mike McShane. The Cinderella story continues for the moment for the PC Friars. Who would have ever thought they'd be in this position back in December? There's a flip shot there by Goudreau that's saved by Del Judas. Maine starts back. This is Bruce Major. Tries to connect with Corkum and does finally. Bob just sweeps it in deep. Back after it is Vitale. This is Bobak. He sweeps it around the dasher and outside the zone. Providence College started the year 0-6, then 1-9. And, and here they are with a chance to go to the final four unless Maine can do something in a hurry. It's Rob Goudreau for PC. The freshman outstanding player, co-rookie of the year in Hockey East. He sweeps it in the zone. PC is making quick changes, trying to keep fresh troops out there. Meanwhile, Maine continues to try to get some pressure on. Whittemore at center ice. Stephen Higgins is number two. Fire rubs him to the board and sends him down. Now there's a scramble along the boards. It's knocked in there by Pat Becker. Maine is having trouble getting some offense mounted. Vince Guadagni tries to send it up but can't. Knocked right back in there by Jim Hughes. Give PC credit. They are playing some steady defense here right now and bottling up mean something fierce. Now, Capuano at center right. He comes with a Lamon. He'll drop it for Thayer. Thayer in front of the It's been so sporadic. They've been two on one and one on twos, and, and they came up three tonight. Right now, Chris Alon drops it back to uh, Meyer, and he just redirect, just puts it to the net. David Cap. I don't even know if David Cap even touched it. That might have just went right in off some skates. Here we'll have another look at it. Chris Alon 
back to Mario. Mario just says, hey, I'm going to throw it to the net, see what happens. And sure enough, the red light comes on. And that's twice tonight. The two goals that Maine have have come from just firing it on net and seeing what happens. Now it is 3-2. The crowd is back in it. 11-18 left in the game. The crowd is really whooping it up now. Bob Beers at center ice connects with Robitaille. Robitaille moves in and then just dumps it in. On it first, it's Jenkins. He sends it around to Perron, intercepted by Sondercook. Sondercook tries to clear the zone. Burke tees it up in front. It's deflected to the corner. Oh, that was close. Now Butterworth. He'll just try to hold on and get it outside the zone, and they do. Breaking out is David Gooden. Two on one. Gooden in. That's offside. No, we've got a penalty. A penalty on Thomas. Paul Sondercook's going to be going for Albuin. Him and Guy Perron got tied up a little bit behind the play, and uh, he figured he'd give him one more shot, and uh, Petrovsky was sitting right there and saw the whole thing. We'll take a look at it here. momentum change now. Not only was that a penalty, but it stopped a two-on-one break for the Friars. It comes at the 10.45 mark. Retaliation penalty. John Wall sends out Capuano, fire, Corkum, Guadotti, and Beers. Providence dumps it in the main zone. This is an important power play for the Bears. Bob Beers tries to move it in. Capuano does get it inside the zone. They're still in there. Capuano in a fight for it. Beers has it. Beers winds up. Shot gets wide. Here's Guadani, his shot goes high and wide. Now Beers is on it as they're firing at random. Finally, Obey sends it down the ice. Made 0 for 5 tonight in the power play. Hey, Sean Lawson sure like to have him get one right now. A minute 24 left on the power play. Here comes Fire. He'll break in. Goes to the corner and puts on the brakes. He gets it back to the point where Beers is standing. Beers back to Fire. Now to Capuano. He tries to move in front. It comes back to the corner. Then it's just simply fired down the ice by Wild Goose. 58 seconds left on the power play. Fire. He's knocked down. Now it's intercepted by Goudreau. He'll break in. Shot. Stayed by Del Judas. Man, what a save by Matt Del Judas. On a shorthanded opportunity by Providence. Now Guidotti. He'll move in front and it's caught by Romain. He'll sweep it to the corner. Now it's Robitaille. He'll withhold the puck, move it back to the point. Scrimmon. Now Robitaille loses it for the moment. In front, in the corner it goes. Robitaille still has it. Now Scrimmon. Scrimmon. Back to Robitaille. He'll move in and give it back to Scrimmon. His shot in front. It goes just wide. It's deflected in front and almost went on. Providence knocks it down the ice again, and 10 seconds remain on the power play. Oh, man, oh, man, how much closer can you get? The penalty is over to Sondercook. We're back five aside. He's got the pressure turned right up. Oh, man, oh, man. Now Soroic trying to clear the zone but can't. The Bears keep it in. Perron goes to the corner with Kane. They wrap each other up and they'll tie it up for a face-off if they can. But the no whistle blow. Robitaille now. He's pinned to the boards by Gooden. And finally they get a whistle. We'll take a break in the action. It's Maine trailing the Friars 3-2. This is it.
Ponderina, and here was a close call for the main Black Bears. Rob Goudreau breaks in shorthanded. And Del Judas came up big. What else can you say? Play is on. It's Butterworth with the puck for the PC Friars. He'll skate through center ice and then just drive it in. Kramer goes after it along with Butterworth. It slips outside the zone, and Soroic is content to dump it right back in. 7.55 left in the game. Maine needs a goal to tie it up. Now at center ice, it's Kramer against the boards. It's taken over by Maine. Board against the boards, it goes again, and finally, it is Wild Wild Goose for the Friars. He'll move to center ice, keep going over the blue line, continue to march in. Around Beers and around the net, he centers it in front, he can't get the pass, and finally, behind the net, it falls underneath the player for an attack. Boy, Maine comes out and plays hard for a couple minutes, and uh, Providence doesn't even let up. They're right, ba they're right back there answering uh, every call that Maine can give them. Great work there by Wild Goose. Trying to center that puck. Seven twenty-nine left in the game. Maine fans would like to see St. Paul, Minnesota up close and personal, but they've got to get a goal in order to do it. To at least get this thing tied. Madigan just drives it in for PC. Vitale is on it now. To Major, intercepted by Wild Goose, and it comes back to Soro. Now it's knocked in by Sean Kane. PC with it. Now intercepted by Obey as he continues to forecheck. The Bears are being bottled up for the moment. Obey continuing to work hard. A man is knocked down and on the ice, and it is Wild Goose. Now, there is no call, but obviously Wild Goose is in some pain. Him and Jimmy Bur Bur Burke ran into each other right on the blue line, and uh, I don't know if he caught a stick or just part of Jimmy's shoulder, but he's down in a uh, little pain. Here we'll take a look at it, see what happens. Well, maybe a little uh, trying to slow him up a little bit. Wild Goose was trying to run in there pretty hard and hit uh, Bobby Clark and maybe he's trying to slow him up a little bit. Wild Goose remains down on the ice. All of this happens at the 651 mark of period three. Providence maintaining a three to two goal advantage and Mike McShane sends his captain out to say hey ref where was the call by the way they gave Mario Fire means second goal so Capuano did not touch it in front Scott you were right on that Mario just thrown it to the front and went in uh, we're gonna gotta keep trying to get that puck to the net some nice to have Mario back in the lineup. Wild Goose is okay. It looked like some blood on the face, I thought. Um, but he is okay. The crowd gives him a pleasant response. He got a little scrape there. Hopefully nothing too serious. He's played a great game tonight. Scored the first goal of the, of the night. He'll dump it in, and Maine will go chase. Romaine sends it around to Bennett. Bennett falls on the play, but Bobak sweeps it outside the zone. Now Goudreau can't get it. Fire does. Beers connects with Capuano. He's rubbed to the board, but keeps on going. Capuano still with the puck. Turns around in front. It's hung on to by Romaine. Mario Fire and Scott Pellin right in there trying to look for a, a garbage goal. And are we going to have penalties? One. It might even be on the goaltender. He kind of came out of his crease there.
Looks like it's going to be on the goaltender, I think. He came out and uh, gave Scott Peller a little bit of a Man shot. Matching penalties. Both gates are open. The crowd doesn't like it. Let's see if we can see. They're going to be matching penalties. So we'll take a look at it. There's a, there's a swipe by Camby. Scotty Peller right in there trying to pull that puck out of Romain's glove. Yeah, it's going to be Pellerin. Pellerin's going to go for slashing. Here we'll take another look at it. He's holding it up there and he gives it a little whack trying to knock it out of there. Yeah, that's, that's Pellerin, not Candy. I'm sorry, eight instead of nine. All right, so we'll skate four aside. Penalty also assessed to Mark Romain of Providence. Stephen Higgins will serve the penalty for Providence. He's one of their defensemen. Faceoff will come to the left of Romaine. 6.25 left in the game. The Bears desperately trying to get the third goal, the tying goal. It's 3-2 Providence. Faceoff finally taken out of there by Jim Hughes. We're skating four on four now. Hughes knocks it to center ice and into the main zone. Now Wild Goose tries to get on it. He certainly is okay because he's back out there skating around. Almost intercepted by Maine, by Providence, and it is for the moment. Now Hughes, he'll just dump it in from center ice. And Del Judas is on it. Four on four, a lot of ice. Uh, Obey almost steals the puck. It sports outside the blue line. Obey and Wild Goose, and that's an offside play. The Wild Goose hadn't cleared the zone, I guess. Vinny Gadotti and Bobby Corkum trying to play a little catch here, getting that puck out of the zone. 5.53 left. I'll keep you in tune with the scoreboard. It's all important. The Bears need to get this thing tied. Everybody is on pins and needles at this stage, hoping that the Bears can get a tying goal and then see what happens. A trip to the final four is at stake tonight. Now Bob Beers being checked by Goudreau. Now it's Claudio Strem. He has trouble. He has to reload. Now Beers. And finally, it's called out of there. Cut on it is PC. At center ice, Soroic. Now Goudreau. He'll flip it. Jenkins has it. We're skating four on four, matching minor penalties. 58 seconds left on those penalties. Soroic has it. He's played a lot of ice time here tonight. Jeff Soroic. He'll move up the right side at center ice. He'll dump it in, and PC will change up. Bennett comes out there. Now, along with Ferguson. Also out there is Pat Becker for Maine, Scrimmon and Beers, Capuano and Fire. Now Fire trying to work a little magic. Here he goes. He's intercepted by Becker. Becker smartly holds on to Gooden. He'll fly up the right side against Perron. Perron hauls him down. No call. Now it's Gooden and Becker. They keep it in. Becker's flip shot is just wide. Now it's Gooden. He goes to the corner. Two men go down. Guadani goes down and they kill still scramble for the puck. Guadani rides it out of there. Guadani and Fire. Now they come cross wing to Perron. Perron in front. He's hauled down by Bennett. No call is coming. Bennett will try to skate it outside the zone. He just flips it to center ice. 420 left in the game. 420 and counting. Now PC's Rick Bennett fires it to the open wing. Hughes is on it. Trying to clear the zone. He flips it up high and gets it to center ice. Obey is on it. Again, Guadani. Obey just takes a whack at it and sends it in deep. Now an even four minutes left. Stands. We'll take a break in the action. It's Providence 3, Main 2. We're coming right back. This is your last chance. Your last chance to buy Sealy Posturepedics at 1988 sale prices. Country Farm Furniture's Sealy Gallery is overflowing with a special purchase of premium bedding. Twin pieces start at $59.95, and you'll save even more on the top of the line Posturepedics. As usual, Country Farm Furniture will deliver your purchase free. But hurry for last year's prices at the Sealy showrooms at Country Farm Furniture in Kennebunk and Gray. All right, back at Alphonse Arena, you see the shot by Obey. 
just comes right down that right side and tries beating Matt Lowe. Matt, with great concentration, just steers it wide. Back now to live action play in the main zone. Scrimmon tries to clear it to center right and does. Sorowick is on it and dumps it right back in. 3.39 left in the game. Providence has a 3-2 to two lead. Maine needs to get the tying goal. Walker moves through over the blue line. He'll shoot it this way. It goes to the corner. That didn't miss by more than six inches. Now to the corner it goes. got a stoppage in play a couple of things fly out onto the ice and so everybody is getting a rest 
Sean Walsh argued his case. First of all, the ref told Mario Thayer he had to get off the ice, but Maine gets the last switch. Perry kicked him off again. Now we're gonna have Martin Robitaille back on to take this draw. <laughs> Robitaille against Obey. It is won by Maine. Vince Wood on it. Blue center right, he comes. Vince over the blue line, tries to move in. He's bumped to the boards, in front it goes. Now Robitaille is on it. Robitaille back to Jenkins. Jenkins, shot in front, saved by Romaine. It goes behind the net. It's Robitaille all alone, behind the net, trying to work a play, goes to the corner. Hughes is punching him. Finally, it comes to Jenkins. Jenkins in front, Robitaille hits it wide. Now it's Obey on it. He just flips it to center ice, and on it is Lyle Wildridge. But now Robitaille sweeps it back in. A minute 15 left in the game. A minute 15 and counting. Wildridge intercepted and hauled down. And Maine will have a power play. Joe 
Jones a hard time. We're giving away lawnmowers, and I can guarantee you the grass will grow. So come on down to Yankee Ford between now and the end of the month. Make your best deal, get the highest trading allowance, and take one of these brand new lawnmowers home with you for no extra charge. And we can back up what we sell with our factory trained technicians, our large parts department, and our state of the art body shop. Yankee Ford, Yankee Ford just over the Million Dollar Bridge in South Poland. Welcome back to Alphon Arena, everyone. Dale Duff, along with Scott Smith. And we are going to go to overtime, a 10-minute overtime period. Maine and Providence tied at three. The Bears in a great comeback job. Two third-period goals, and here they are. Here's the second goal. Mario Thayer, you know, they haven't gotten much going, so he's just going to throw it to the net. He sees David Cap going, and it just gets deflected somehow in there, and they gave Mario the credit, and uh, that was a big goal. This place just went crazy. He didn't really have anything to shoot at, so he was just going to try getting it into the net. Christian Alon dropped it back to him. And he says, what the heck, I'll let her go. Sure two, enough. Two of Maine's three goals have come just by firing it on the net and deflecting in. That came at the 835 mark of the third period. A lot, of, a lot of big goals are scored like that, just redirections. You don't have to have much on it because that goaltender is seeing so many things and thinking so much that, uh, you know, he doesn't know where the puck's coming from. And right there, that could even been his own players kicking it in. And so that made the score three to two. And this one was the game tire, and it sent the place rocking. Martin Robitaille sends in Scott Peller and going down the left side, and he just winds up and takes a bomb and beats Romaine on the right in the upper corner there. Great shot, great goal. Here we'll take another look at it. Puck rolls up on its edge, and uh, Scotty has good control and just lets it go. That's a great goal, beating him on his glove side like that. That goal comes at 17.38. It came with 2.28 left in the period. One more look at it. You got to give a lot of credit to Martin Robitaille because he was in traffic, and he got control of the puck, and he saw Scotty breaking, and he just gave him a great pass. That's what teamwork, teamwork's all about, Dale. Helping each other out. And then the Bears had a couple of golden opportunities uh, in the last two minutes, but just couldn't get it by Romaine. So here's how it went in the third period. Thayer made it 3-2. to two. Capuano and Lalonde with the assist. And then Scott Pellerin with that blast. Robitaille and goalie Matt Del Judas, who cleared the puck to Robitaille, got an assist. It doesn't happen very often that a goalie gets a point but give one to Del Judas. The goaltenders let you know about it too when they get a point because uh, that's a bonus for them. And so after 
three periods of play. It is three to three. The series is tied at one game apiece, and we still don't know any more now than we did Friday night who is going to go to St. Paul and the Final Four. It's going to boil down to one goal, Dale, and that's uh, it's all about. Here's where Scott Pellerin almost ended everything. He just winds up and takes a shot on net, and it just goes wide by a few inches. The main fan saw it went in and hit the webbing on the side of the net, and uh, geez, that would, this place would have went crazy. I don't know if we would have been able to get out of here. Scotty Pound just left a nice shot go, and it's just wide by a few inches. And just, you're, you're right. People on the other side of the ring saw the net go, and they thought it went in, but it hit the side of the net. Wow. Three to three. We're going to overtime. We'll come back with more from Alphon Arena after this. What would you get a set of Pete for his birthday? Mine was last Tuesday, and everybody gave me the same thing. Shoes from Levinsky Spring Footwear Sale. The Reeboks from Mom are 25% off. So are all the Nikes and the Vias. Those tree torrents from Uncle Bob are just $26.99 at Levinsky. Elise gave me the Mainwoods fashion shoes, and my brother Sam got me the wildest vision. I love all my shoes from Levinsky, but I really wish someone would give me a t-shirt or shorts. They're all on sale, too. Or jeans. Just ask Lenny, he's run a lot of different machines. With a D3, you're talking ready. You can tackle any job you want to tackle. You can do a big fill job, you can keep up with 10 wheelers. In my opinion, it's the best. The torque converter into the D3 transmission really gives it an edge. That's one of the reasons why I switched all my machines to Caterpillar. Owners and operators agree about Caterpillar quality. We can put it to work for you too. We're Jordan Milton, your Caterpillar dealer, Scarborough, Maine. Every weather shield window and door is crafted with the utmost care and attention to detail. That's why they've become the builder's choice. With over a quarter century of experience, they're producing some top quality wood windows to meet some very special specifications. Distinctive wood windows and doors built from the finest quality materials. Weather shield windows built for you. Don't just admire them, ask for them at your weather shield dealer. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. Back at Alphond Arena, it is three to three at the end of regulation. We are going to go to overtime shortly to see which team is going to go to the final four. Joining us now is Maine Athletic Director Kevin White. And Kevin, uh, they don't have anything like this out in Iowa, do they? <laughs> I'll tell you what, Dale, everybody in this place here, I, I think everybody's tingling, everybody's jumping. Uh, this is quite a... What does it mean for uh, the athletic department to, to get the hockey team, if it can get back out there to the Final Four for a second straight year? It's absolutely immeasurable. I mean, you just raise the level of awareness of the university in the great state of Maine by way of the hockey program. You know, those kinds of things are just, just so darn difficult to measure, but it means good things, we know that. You've been in a lot of arenas across the country, not just hockey, but basketball and other, other things. Uh, this Alphonse Arena crowd, the last five minutes of this game, uh, that had to be a, a special moment. It, it's the most exciting environment I think I've ever been in. Again, my body is just full of chills, and I think there's about 4,200 people in this arena that are in the same condition. I think we're all trembling. What a great hockey game. And for the Hockey East uh, League itself, having this great series, having BC, I guess, still tied up with uh, Michigan State out there, it says a lot for, a lot for Hockey East. It, it sure does. The, the league is really, really emerging, and I think that the performances that, that you're speaking about certainly suggest that. And I think the Hockey East has got a real outstanding future. What, uh, what are the plans that, as an AD, do you have to make uh, during the past week? You have to kind of prepare for the team and all of the equipment and everything to get out to St. Paul. Um, you have to make those plans ahead of time, right? You know, we're kind of, ADs are a little bit different than coaches. Coaches don't want to look beyond the series, and they right. can't, and I understand that, and our players can't. But our, the people on our staff, our, uh, our assistant AD for finance and our ticket people and so forth, have had to already start begin that kind of uh, preliminary planning and, and 
and work towards that if in fact that would become reality and god we got our fingers and toes and everything else crossed hoping that comes to fruition well i think we've got four thousand other people around here hoping for the same thing thanks very much enjoy the game go back to that spot you were in when maine came back <laughs> i'll be right in that position thank you <laughs> okay kevin white maine's athletic director thanks very much our score at the end of regulation maine three providence three we're coming back after this Excuse me, who's the expert on aerodynamics around here? You're looking at him. Tell me, what's the most aerodynamic sedan made in North America? You're looking at it. Yes, Eagle Premier is the most aerodynamic sedan built in North America. And now it's also one of the most affordable. But you don't need an expert to tell you that. See your New England Jeep Eagle dealers, where you can expect the best. This is it. What you've been in love for. Come on and feel so good. Well, you just won't go and go. Come on, ride with me. Come on, ride with me. Fiber Classic by Thermatrue. Rugged fiberglass and solid insulating foam that looks just like wood, but stands up to blistering heat and fighting cold for years. The great looking, trouble free Fiber Classic by Thermatrue. An open and shut case for greater home beauty. Available at better lumber yards throughout Maine. Alphonse Arena, Sean Walsh and his troops have just entered the ice surface. Providence has been out here for a while. And we are set for overtime to decide this thing. We'll play a 10-minute overtime period. The goalies will stay in the same ends that they were in at the end of regulation. Now, if we go to another overtime period, they swap ends and we'll play another 10-minute period. We'll keep playing 10-minute overtime periods until something happens. The tie must be broken. This is what it's all about, Dale. I'm telling you, these main fans are seeing a great game tonight. It has been a tremendous series. And no matter who wins, this has been a great series for college hockey. There's a big sign on the balcony. Maybe you've seen it go by here before, but it says there is a world, but right now it's go, main, go. <laughs> and uh, truer words have never been spoken. The world stops right at Alphonse Arena for the moment. Now remember, Maine still has the power play for 53 seconds. Off is Lyle Wild Goose. The penalty carries over. The next goal wins. Mario Fire, Guy Perron, Scott Pellerin, Bob Beers, and Dave Capuano are out there for Maine. Let's see what happens. Bo Back is back to forecheck, but Maine breaks out. Mario Fire at center ice tries to go around, around one man, but then it is intercepted and cleared down the ice. 30 seconds now left on the penalty to Wild Goose. Dave Capuano, slowly he comes on the wing. It comes to Perron, who just dumps it in deep. On it first is Rick Bennett. He sends it outside the zone and back down the ice. 15 seconds left on the penalty to Wild Goose. Now it is Bob Beers for Maine, who goes to Mario Fire. 
Keith puts a flip shot that goes high. It comes to the board. Pellerin takes a hit. Knocks down Obey. On it now is Pat Maddox. He moves in. He'll take a shot, but he never gets the shot off. And Maine breaks back. But Soroic at center ice intercepts and knocks it back in. The penalty is over. We're back skating five aside. Now at center ice, it is Pellerin. Pellerin takes a hit to the board from, from Soroic, and the PC Flyers take over. Gooden tries to dump it in, but can't. On it is Rick Bennett at center ice, scrimming. He'll just flip it in deep, and the Bears will go after it. Soroic is on it, though, for problems. He'll just flip it up, and it winds up in the crowd. Going back and forth, just, uh, just like the game has been all night. 29 left in this first overtime period. You see hit here, Scotty Pellerin lines up Mark O'Brien. Gives him a little shot. He got had to get a feel that one a little bit. Kind of looking around. Mario O'Brien was looking around for a penalty, maybe. David Gooden against Martin Robitaille on the draw. One by PC, and Hughes is on it. Lalonde is checking him. Hughes, the rock-steady defenseman. Now it's cleared out, but not out. Kept in by Ming. Hughes is back on it. He sends it to the other wing, where Pat Becker has it. At center ice, Ferguson. He tries to break in. He's hauled down on the play. It skips outside the zone. Robitaille, two on two with Jenkins. He'll just fire it in deep, and Jenkins goes after it. He takes a hit to the boards, and PC takes over. Now it is Gooden just flipping it to center ice. 7.55 left in this first overtime period. We're tied at three. Now it's Gooden. He four checks behind. It's loose in front there, and now it's Goudreau. Back it comes. There's a centering pass, and it's skated out of there by me. This is Mario Fire. He'll come up the right side. And that's Christian Lalonde now to fire. Now it's back behind the net. Fire with the puck, trying to get it back to Lalonde, but he can't. Now he does. Christian holds on, comes along the boards, drops it back in deep, but Hughes is there for PC. He'll fire around the dasher, but can't clear it out. Now it's Maine's Pellerin. Pellerin continues to wheel and deal. He's poke checked, and the puck goes down the ice. PC will change. Maine will do some changing as well. Seven minutes left in the overtime period. We're tied at three. At center ice, Sean Kane just fires it in on Del Judas. He'll make an easy stick save. Now Capuano to Luke Patel. It'll go into the corner. Capuano is wrapped up by two men. Now Major comes in and helps up to Patel. He can't get the shot off. Now it's Mario Ove. Around the dasher he goes. Guidotti tees it up in front of the squad. Wild Goose is on it. He'll try to clear the zone, but can't. Now it's Capuano. David to Ove overtakes it. Mario Ove trying to clear the zone and does. He can't send Wild Goose away. It comes all the way down on Del Judas. Now it's Capuano. He'll take a shot from the blue line. He partially fans on it. Sondercook takes over. Now it's Pat Becker to Sondercook. He'll just flip it in the zone, and they'll go after it. In they go. Ferguson is in there with Becker. Behind the net it goes. Now it's trying to be centered by PC, but they can't. Robitaille takes over for the moment. Now in front it's loose, and it goes to the corner. Maine getting pinned in for the moment. Finally, they sweep it down the ice. They wave off ice. Great play by Matt Del Judas there, poking that puck away. Perron is in deep to forecheck. They clear it outside the goal. Zone does David Gooden. And now Jenkins just fires it back in. Maine wants to change. PC wants to change as well. This is great, great action. Next goal wins. Now it is Providence's Sean Kane being chased by fire. He gives up the puck. Pellerin and Goudreau go. Beers tees it up. It's knocked down wide in front. It's Bennett. He'll send it around the dasher. Goudreau will try to get to it. Can't sweep it out. There's a tee up. And Goose just wide. Now Bennett knocks it out to center right. And in breaking is Mike Bobak. Can he get to the puck? Yes, he does. But Scrimmon rubs him out of the play. 3-3 is our score. There's a shot on taken by Robeson. 
It's held on to, and we've got a whistle. Great action here. Maine going down, getting a great shot. Providence answering the, the tally. Four minutes and 50 seconds left in this overtime period. Oh, so close for Maine. Bobby Beers had a big game tonight so far. The face-off is between Vitali and Obey. Names Capuano takes his time getting off the ice, and finally he does. Every face-off is so important. It is won by Maine. Vince Guadagno starts up the left wing. He tries to connect wing to wing with Corkum, but can't do it. Providence on the puck. They try to go wing to wing, and Maine just bangs it right back in. On it first, it's Jeff Robeson. Now Wild Goose. He tries to send away a man, but only Vince Guadagni is there. Now Wild Goose intercepts at the red line. Over the blue line he comes, drops it off. There's a shot. It's blocked by Burke. Nice play by Jim Burke. Now he tries to send away Vitale. He can't. Want to play at center ice, and it jumped into the corner. On it first is Paul Sondercook. Robitaille takes him to the board. Perron tries to center it, but Obey is there for PC. Now Wild Goose has it jump over his stick. It clears down into the main zone. Oh, boy, look at that. Almost a collision by Beers and Del Judas. Four minutes left in overtime. This is heroic. It's an offside play by Maine. They clear the zone now, and here comes PC. 17 is Pat Beckham trying to move in. He does. Still with the puck, tries to center it, but can't. The puck is loose. Becker behind the net. It comes with Gooden. Back to the point. This is shot on and it's stopped somehow by Del Judas. Boy, Matt lost sight of that puck. He didn't know where it was. You got a break there by having it cleared. Now in breaks Becker. He tries to move in. The puck is loose. It's finally ridden out of there by Burke. They clear it down the ice. Will it be icing? Yes. That Del Judas. Had a point-blank shot right on him. He made the initial save, and then he lost that puck. One, one of the main players had to ice it out of there. Wow. <laughs> 3.24. Here, we'll take a look. The puck's coming from the point. Oh, that was tipped by the Providence player. Bobby Beer just picked it up and got it out of there. On the draw, one by PC. Sondertuk trying to keep it in and does. Scremen is on it though for Maine. Claudio Scremen starting up, tries to connect with Capuano. Providence player is without a stick. In breaks fire into the boards. He'll go with Sondercook behind the net. And finally, Hughes takes over. Hughes now to Bennett, who's got another stick. Rick Bennett at center ice. He'll just drive it in, and PC wants to change. There's a broken stick on the ice as, uh, right about at the blue line. Now they try to start it up. There's a shot on by uh, Maine and a stop by Romaine. Boy, those things can be tricky if they're bouncing. Outbreaks Maddie. Through the blue line, he'll come. He runs into trouble, though, and Maine's stuck from the side. Now Sean Kane tries to drive it back in. On it now is Jeff Soroic. Soroic tries to clear it over the red line and does, but Maine intercepts. Vitale against Soroic. They'll go after it. Soroic sends it to the open wing. Corkum is going to get to it first. He sends it in deep. Vitale and Soroic again. Obey takes over. Major now has a man at the point, decides to backhand it to the open corner. Corkum, he's got the puck. Goes in deep to Vitale. It sports in the air. Now it's Kane. Obey has it now for PC. Obey just flips it to center ice and down the ice. That'll be icing on PC. Bay was playing it real smart there. They really didn't have anything. They didn't have any good shots. They kept the puck down low. And, and one of the important things, they didn't, they didn't center it out when no one was there. Because no centering pass when no one's around is just a great breakout pass. It'd be a great break, breakout pe pass for Providence. 159 left in this first sudden death overtime. We are tied 3-3. A great comeback effort from Maine. They trailed 3-1 after two periods. Nobody is leaving Alphonse Arena. This is tremendous college hockey. 
face off. It is won by Maine. A player is hauled down in front row. Maine squeezes it. You saw Guy Perron get pulled down by Jimmy Hughes right there in front. And uh, Polchowski isn't going to call much. It's got to be pretty blatant. Uh, he's going to let him play hockey and go all out. And so the face-off will come again to the left of Romaine. Gooden will take it against Robitaille. This time it's won by PC. Hughes is on it. He just sends it up ice to Gooden. Nice pass. He connects wing to wing with Becker. In breaks Becker. He goes to the corner, still with the puck, trying to make a play, but can't. Gudotti has him tied up nicely and sends him down to the ice. On it now is Gooden with Beers. They tie it up. The puck is down there somewhere in the corner. Four men are down on the ice and still no whistle. Against the boards they go. Finally, it's broken out of there by Becker. In breaks Gooden. Stuck. He has two shots. wide deflected in front now it's robotite can he break out no he can't not for the moment anyway but here's perron that's an offside play even if he had touched up it would have been offside two great chances oh. for providence matt del judas answering the call and they're letting them know about it right now they're giving him a standing no here you will see that in his sleep there's one he gets one more in there too what wow, it got deflected off to the side. Here it is from another angle. 13 is David Gooden. He's the initial shot, and he follows right up on his rebound, and it comes right back to him. And Matt has the, the pads on the ice, and he deflects it wide. Play is on, but it's an offside call on Providence, so the faceoff will come outside the zone. 101 left in the first overtime period. 3-3 our score, and Matt Del Judas is rock solid. It'll be Bobak and Vitale on the draw. One by Maine. Claudio Scrimmon at center ice. He'll wind up and fire it wide. On it first is Bruce Major. He'll knock it in deep, but Sorowick is there. He finds Sonder Cook, and away comes PC. Here is Paul Sondercook. Through center ice, he'll come. He'll wind up. It's tipped in front there a little bit, but it's cleared nicely by, by Del Judas. Down the ice, they'll call that icing. Matt just getting control of that puck. He was looking for someone up the middle and uh, got up a little high, so they had, to, they had to call him on icing there. 36 seconds left in the first overtime period. They have played for three straight nights and still nothing gives. Wow. Obey and fire on the draw. Wow, Goose. And a main player coming in the circle uh, too soon as uh, Capuano. Referee comes over and tells him to cut it out. Draw one by Maine's Mario Thayer. He'll send it down the ice. And will that be icing? Yes. Huh, isn't that interesting? Down to 30 seconds left in overtime. These guys have played for an even three hours now tonight. And I think the crowd is as exhausted as the players. <laughs> Mike McShane, the Cinderella story. The Bears try to get things gathered behind their net. Out breaks Maine. It's fire, loses the puck to Hughes. Wild Goose can't control that pass. And at center ice, they play it. Capuano has it almost intercepted by Obey. He finds Pellerin, but that's offside. Pellerin was in over the line. Not only are the fans exhausted, I'm exhausted, Dale. I'm emotionally I'm burned out here. This has just been up and down. I don't know how much voice I've got left, I'll tell you. Uh, Sean Walsh. I hope the viewers uh, at home feel the same yeah. way. Oh. Sean Walsh shaking his head. Mike McShane. Hey, just another game for our Cinderella team. Huh? Huh. We got a barn burner out in Michigan also. Wow. 
BC and Michigan State tie. Ooh, there's a shot on. And Romaine had to be quick to stop that one. Uroba tie. In the corner, he centers it. Time expires as the centering pass was made. And we have come to the end of our first regulation. We'll take a break and come back with our second overtime after this. Can you afford to drive a Buick? of a button. Only Ranger 4x4 gives you this advanced system, standard. And Ranger beat Chevy S10 in standard horsepower and torque. It's today's best-selling compact truck. Get 4.9% financing or up to $750 cash bonus on 89 Rangers. Nearly 300,000 Ford and GM owners recently made room in their garages for something new and exciting. Toyota Quality, the kind found in the Toyota 4x4. Now Toyota dealers are out to switch thousands more to Toyota, and they're out to beat any deal. Prices start less than Ford Ranger, and now the way dealers are dealing, Toyota's a lot less. So it's the best time to stock up on Toyota Quality. The switch is on. Hurry to your Toyota dealer now. Don't get shut out of a great deal. This is your last chance, your last chance to buy Sealy Posturepedics at 1988 sale prices. Country Farm Furniture's Sealy Gallery is overflowing with a special purchase of premium bedding. Twin pieces start at $59.95, and you'll save even more on the top-of-the-line Posturepedics. As usual, Country Farm Furniture will deliver your purchase free. But hurry for last year's prices at the Sealy showrooms at Country Farm Furniture in Kennebunk and Gray. I welcome back to Alphond Arena as we get set for our second overtime period. Matt Del Judas has been nothing but rock solid in net for the Bears. And what can you say about Mark Romain of PC? He has been equal to the task as well. Imagine how tired they must be. I don't think uh, they're running anything with pure adrenaline, Dale. They have to be exhausted. Our second overtime period the winner the next goal wins and that team moves to the final four will it be Maine? will it be Providence here we go Vitale and Bobak on the draw remember now the teams have swapped in so Maine skates this way that's an offside play right off the bat what effect, if any, do you think after playing a whole period and an overtime period in the same direction, is there any effect at all, Scott, do you think, uh, switching ends? I don't think it has much, much difference, Dale. They, you know, it's the same game, and uh, they're just going hard. They don't, they don't care which way they're going. Well, you saw PC and the Michigan State score. They're headed to overtime. And uh, I'll tell you what, Hockey East is looking pretty good these days right now, huh? Now it's Goudreau. He'll break in one on two. He can't go around Scrimmon for the moment. He just sends it in deep. Beers plays it for Maine. We're tied at three, just beginning the second overtime period. Goudreau continues to work hard. Now it's Beers, but he can't get anywhere, and PC takes over. Now it's Rick Bennett. He'll just fire it ahead. Scrimmon and Goudreau go after it. Goudreau centers it, but there's nobody there for teammates. Now Vitaly. He'll knock it outside the zone. Bennett takes a hit from Corkum, knocks him into the boards. Now it's Sondercook on it. Bennett was knocked right into the penalty box. And that's going to be icing on Providence. Bobby Corkum laying a great hit on uh, Rick Bennett. Kind of caught him off guard right by the penalty box. There we'll take a look at it. Bennett says, I've been in that box all year. I don't want to be there now. Face off to the left of Romaine. Fire will take it for the Bears. 
it is finally won by Provins. Behind the net, Heroic. It jumps over Wild Goose's stick, and they take it over, though. Now if out breaks Obey, he moves in. Can he get to the puck? He does with Guadotti rubbing him to the boards. He tries to center the puck, but can't. Main takes over. Guadotti does a 360 and still maintains control. Now it's Main breaking in two on one. Capuano to fire. Capuano. It goes just wide. Three on one for Main. Oh, man. Now here comes Wild Goose. He can't connect with Obey and Pellerin takes over. He'll just dump it into center ice and they go to the corner. Heroic is on it. Main has three on one. They'll tie it up there for another face-off. David Capuano will be seeing that one. He was out there for quite a long shift, and uh, he might have been just too exhausted to get that puck on net. I think everybody's exhausted. What a great opportunity. Tries shooting her off the pass. Geez, that hit the outside of the post. You don't get much closer than that. Wow. John Ferguson against Lalonde. Ferguson trying to move ahead. Now against Beers. Becker is in there to help. Robitaille for Maine. Hughes takes over. At center rice, Jim Hughes tries to dump it in. Lalonde gets a stick on it. Now it's back. He's trying to get a shot off and does Del Judas with a stick save there. Back it comes to Lalonde. He'll try to break out Perron. Key Perron comes in, two on two. He has it poke checked away from him by Hughes. He'll come around the net. The puck is still back there somewhere. Four men are after it. Lalonde is back there along with Robitaille. It comes back to Scrimmon. Scrimmon fries it across in front, but there's nobody there to tip it. Beers just knocks it in deep. Perron goes after it. Now it comes back to the boards and is cleared outside the zone. No, it isn't as of yet. Now it is. Now it's Ferguson trying to go after it with Scrimmon. He does, but can't go anywhere. They go fighting to the corner, and now it is Vitaly taking over. Now it comes around the dasher where Goudreau intercepts. Goudreau tries to center it to Gooden. Vitaly breaks out of there. Luke Vitaly, the former Providence player, moves in. He goes wide, comes around. Sonder Cook puts a check to him, and Bennett takes over. Seven minutes left in the second overtime. The second overtime. We're tied at three. Now it comes wing to wing. Bennett and Guadotti tie it up. And finally, it's intercepted by Maine's Bruce Major. He can't go around anywhere, and Vitaly tries to dump it in. Goudreau intercepts. Now Vitaly. He'll just dump it in the zone. Back after it is Jeff Robinson. They clear it to center ice. Maine's Guadotti with it now. They just dump it in. Can't get it inside the zone. Six and a half minutes left in the second overtime. Fire shoots. It's a save by Romain. He had luck last time with his shot on there. He might as well put it on. Great end-to-end -end action, Dale. This is something else. Wow. Here comes Mario. He doesn't have much, so he says he's just going to put her on net. Mark Romain. We got a final. Boston College, Michigan State. Michigan State won an OT. Michigan State on their way to St. Paul. So... Congratulations to Ron Mason, Sean Welch's father-in-law, future father-in-law. He's headed back to the Final Four, and for Lenny Siglowski's Eagles, it was a great season, but it comes to an end tonight. Bob Beers fires it in deep. Soroic goes after it with main player, but it's intercepted now by Madigan. He'll break out on the right side now, moving towards center. Tries to connect with Wild Goose, but can't. Obey is on it. He'll just knock it in deep. Back for it now is Claudio Scremen. Scremen fires it around to Pellerin, who just tries to clear the zone, but can't. It pops in the air. Madigan keeps it in. He'll just drive it in deep. Wild Goose, Obey, and Becker are forechecking well. Finally, Maine breaks it out of there. Scott Pellerin. He'll try to go wing to wing. It hits a skate of a PC player. That was dangerous. Now it's cleared out of there by PC. Now breaking out is Wild Goose. Can he break in alone? He'll try to, and there is no call. 
That Providence bench is furious. Now it's Lalonde. He'll break in three on one. Guidotti shoots. It's a save. It rolls across the crease. Can you believe it? Now Wild Goose. He'll just drive it in from center ice. And there is no stopping this action. Behind the net, Del Judas is out of the net. It'll come back. The main cl players clear the zone. And Hughes just drives it back in. Now Guidotti and Lalonde intercepted by Goudreau for the moment. Now Gooden, and this is Gooden. He'll drive it in, caught by Del Judas, and he leaves it for Burke. Both teams change. Now it tries to drive it in. Perron tried to catch him, but couldn't. Romain is out of the net. There's a shot on. Romain is out. They fire it around. Burke is on it. He'll tee it up in front. It's a shot in front. It's wide. There's Pellerin. <laughs> to the final four for the second straight year. How about them athletes? It's a great night for Maine Athletics.
main uh, four, Providence three, going to the final four for the second year in a row. What a great moment in University of Maine sports history. Martin Robitaille, the freshman from Quebec, sends Maine to St. Paul, Minnesota for a game Providence Friar team. The Cinderella story is over, and here it is. Jimmy Burke just gets it on net. Martin Robitaille sneaking around out in front there. Big pile up in front. He keeps great poise there, gets control of the puck, and he just puts a backhander. Anything he could get on it, he just directed it to the net. And there it is, on their way to St. Paul. The whole play, I think, was caused because Romain came out of the net, and uh, he was unsure of his positioning. He eventually got back to the net. But look at my robot. Is, go. is that a happy huh? man right there? Hey, he scored over 50 goals in uh, junior hockey last year, and he'd trade them all in for that one, wouldn't he? Oh, boy. Jimmy B Burke being real smart. Saw a lot of confusion in front, just threw it in the front, and uh, Romain got out of the net. He was down. He couldn't get up. He's in a bad position, and uh, we finally got a break. Yeah, Martin but... Robitaille got it, and uh, well, there's a big pileup. He can't, he can't even get up. Romain is down on the ice, and that was a defenseman's um, glove that went up to try to stop that play. Romain was completely out of the position. Here we got a great tier. We'll see a great thing. The Providence defenseman falls right on top of him. That's number Jess Solik. And uh, Martin just gets con control and just slips her in. You have to give a lot of credit to the Providence Friars. You know, they, they peaked at the right time and they played great hockey here in the playoffs. They started their seventh game in 10 nights. And uh, you almost have to wonder if that uh, took a little bit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> A scene that will live on in University of Maine sports history. Martin Robitaille. <laughs> Bob Beers is the first guy to get over there. <laughs> and it is St. Paul, Minnesota. Here we come. And the Bears will take on Minnesota. So you know it'll be a rocking place out there on Friday night. So the final four is now all set. Maine is the last one to get in, but that's okay because they're going to be there. <laughs> it'll be Maine against Minnesota, and it'll be Harvard Michigan against Michigan State. State. Yep. What yep. a great, great final four. There'll be some great hockey out there. Unbelievable. Everybody's happy tonight. John Walsh is happy, and Ron Mason's happy, and uh, it's just like one big happy family. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break and come back. Maine has won it, and it's the final four next. Four to three in double overtime.